All right. Yeah. Tom Bowman sneaking in here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him sneak in quite often. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Thought you were trying to add a add a member to the ship. You know, he's playing seven time. No, I'm kidding. He's a he's playing Nurse Chapel. <laughs> Just a... <laughs> Nurse Chapel. Yeah. So I played a PFS scenario today, Les. How'd it go? <laughs> Started Trouble. at eleven. Okay. Finished at seven. <laughs> oh, did it? <laughs> Jesus. That was sort of like two PFS scenarios, wasn't it? It was it was fun, but also the worst <laughs> PFS scenario I've ever been in. <laughs> the scenario sucked. So what? So what happened? Famous. But so so it went wrong somewhere. What happened? The guy just wasn't prepared. We didn't we didn't really start until an hour into it. Oh really? He never really took charge. The GM never really took charge and got us moving. He was constantly reading. I don't think he was prepared at all. Okay. You know, worse than not prepared. I don't think you ever read the thing before. <laughs> so kind of like how tonight's going to be. Yeah, yeah kind of like tonight. <laughs> okay. yeah. Are you going to give him a Yelp review that's a little poor? <laughs> there should be a Yelp review of Dungeon Masters. It, yeah, it was, but it was fun. I mean, because the players, the banter and everything, it was still good. But that's, yeah, that's was, get four stars, I promise. These things are supposed to be four hours. If you push, you can finish them in three. This took eight. <laughs> I, um, there are almost no games in my life that I can say will take eight and still stay and married. <laughs> like, That's a that. Uh, well, I'm sorry you had a bad experience. Did you get Did you get through it? Did you finish? We finished it. Okay. Um, yeah, we didn't die. Um, so, Bonus. you know, Matt, you were talking about that. I just so I just finished that eight hour game, and now I'm on here for four, <laughs> <laughs> three, three hours. Three, like three, three. Like, three. Just, this is where you be proactive and ask for the honey do list now, so you can start knocking that shit off the list right as soon as you get done. <laughs> oh, I, I've got the list. I'm, okay. I'm working on it tomorrow. Yeah, I always have the list ready. Like, hey, I know I didn't do the thing you wanted, but I did all this other stuff. She's, she's breaking <laughs> up my honey do list same, same, halfway same. through the day tomorrow because uh, she's got her colonoscopy scheduled. Mm. I have to drive her and bring her home, but I can't dun, go dun, in. Dun. <laughs> uh, no, uh, that's not shitty. I, I'm gonna guess that that's something that you don't necessarily want to be a party to. I was yeah, lucky. I, I had to do the box. Les, I think I spoke to the to Don more this week than I have uh, in, in the last eight years. Uh, no reason. No none reason whatsoever. Uh -huh. Because what's going on with you guys? I asked Fla I, uh, Flash. I was asking Alma Data for a new power that's not checking for evil anymore, but checking for uh, seriously shady. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said, this new ability God yes. shines like the sun. <laughs> yeah, like I got a special feat from my Oma Day uh, for shady shit. You know, like ah, ah. <laughs> no, so no, I get, evil, I, but don't trust him. <laughs> I just get the impression that there's a lot of discussion going on that I'm not party to. Is that is that is that correct? No, no, no. no, no. We were uh, actually talking about we're both sneakerheads. I don't know if you know this, and so we were both checking out. You know, like a very various types of sneakers like uh reeboks and Adi uh, i don't know what sneakers are i failed that immediately <laughs> yeah. my, fa my fast talk skill were? failed yeah that 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 uh, that bit of fast talking wasn't jix worthy i'm telling you that yeah. right now that was my best skill in call of Cthulhu was fast talk i can't shoot for shit but i can talk my way out of the steep one attack i have two pair of sneakers at all time one for wearing all the time and one for yeah. the one for wearing and one for churching yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, hold. There's a, one of the one of the my uh, pharmaceutical SVPs is a sneakerhead, and since we're all working from Zoom, he he has the pile behind him, and so my younger members of the staff talk about like, oh my god, he's got the you know the low whatever. Those are eight hundred dollars a piece. So they calculate they have this whole spreadsheet. They've calculated he's got about seven thousand dollars of sneakers on camera at any given time. I'm like. Dude, you know how much role-playing gear I could have for seven thousand dollars? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do one little thing here, but while we're doing this, I just want to uh, uh, remind everybody that our favorite captain, Captain Black, Dan Jensen, uh, has a birthday today. Birthday, Dan. Wait, Dan, I, I'm going to offer you the special. Either you get the happy birthday or I give you the Marilyn Monroe happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but it might be nightmare fuel for you later, depending. <laughs> happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> happy birthday, Dan. 54? Thank you, sir. 
Yep. That's old. And is that rubles or pesos? Well, I remember 54. <laughs> well, happy birthday, man. I turned 51 last week. You turned 54 this week. Uh, we uh, getting a little ancient. How old did you turn last week? 51? 51, baby. Uh, full diaper, runny nose. It's always it's the, <laughs> the burdens of youth. Yeah. Am I, who's, the, who's the youngest on here, Eric? Is that you now? Or who's or Eric? Eric? Eric is, it might be Andrew. Andrew's pretty young. Eric, what? Are you, uh, How old are you, Andrew? Oh, I thought you said pretty. <laughs> pretty young. <laughs> well, you're pretty and you're young. Yeah. Yes. I'm legal. I'm legal. That's, okay. that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> delicately put. Uh, Eric, what about you? I um, was born in May of 68. So that makes me... Um, that makes you 60, uh, 52, 52. 53. 52, 53. Oh, can we take... Uh, can I'm, we object to the word born... I'm doing match. No, you can't. <laughs> hatched. I like hatched. Eric sprang from the room with. I wooden... spawned, but hatched will be fine. He sprang from the womb with wooden spoon in hand. I'm okay um, with the term spawn. Okay, I I move spawn. The gat. <laughs> my... So yeah, I think uh, it might be Andrew's the youngest among us. One, uh -huh. one of my daughters, her nickname is Demon Spawn. <laughs> Okay. I think I know which one too. Which no, one? Uh, your your youngest, I believe. No. She's oh, really? Destructo. Betsy? Betsy's Demon Spawn and Sarah is Madam Destructo. <laughs> oh, man. That's trouble. Uh, but anyway, happy birthday, Dan. Uh, another year. It's, it certainly uh, beats the alternative of not having birthdays. So that's good. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, interesting <laughs> things afoot. Uh, from the last time we played. Uh, and before we get started, that any uh, everybody had a great weekend. Everybody's doing good. Yay! Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty much. Much. I can't do anything without hurting my back somehow. I keep spasming my back. Otherwise, I've had a nice, lovely weekend. Okay, Eric, you look like uh, you made a pretty good weekend. Closer to employment. That's right. Congratulations, Don. Uh, there's a want... gap in between, but good luck with congratulations. For, for those of you that didn't know, I lost my employment on February fourth. I'm sorry to hear that. What is it you do? It turns I out know. I'm not sorry to hear that because I've heard about what's happened there since then, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> fine with it. There's apparently there was some mix-ups. I'm guessing. Oh, with, the, yeah. with the exception of Les and I guess Jennifer, since it always shows up on her uh, her signature, I don't know anybody else that actually does. Actually, does what? What we do? Uh, yeah, like careers. Uh, I'm an IT geek. Okay. Okay. Actually. Nice. Actually, on my tax returns, that's what I write for occupation because they don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Speaking of tax returns, I got to be honest with you. They got the federal government's got some brass balls asking for taxes this year after last year. So, They've given you $1,400. <laughs> yeah, not yet, they haven't. <laughs> no, they did earlier. <laughs> no, I didn't get that either. Oh. You didn't get the first one? No, I make too much. Or at the time, I made too much. Donna, Donna, as you know this, but a lot of the board gaming. Uh, the people who create board games are all started together and they're all IT geeks. So guy who owns Stronghold Games, a bunch of the Asmodee guys, Zev from yep. Z-Man Games, those are all IT geeks. Jeff Engelstein. Um, so they, they, I don't know if Alan Moon was who does Ticket to Ride, but they all, no. they all know each other and uh, they all had that background, origin story. But if they're programmers, they suck at math. <laughs> that's usually why they sold their company for peanuts it's usually <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and had to make peanuts in the gaming industry instead awesome all right well uh, uh, congratulations don for getting a new job uh uh eric you had a pretty good weekend everything's good everything's great i i, I got no complaints and i got up you know i'm practicing my gratitude attitude there you go i like it well, andrew i know had a one of us I know Andrew had a good weekend because he always has a good weekend. Did you do anything fun? Um, I, I stayed in my burrow. There you go. All right. Did not see my shadow. Another six weeks of winter. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, so. Uh, did you ask birthday boy? Oh, did I didn't know. So, Dan, Dan, did you do anything fun for your birthday or did you just uh, sit around the house and be bemoan your woes? <laughs> I got to see my family. I went down and visited them today. Oh, good. Is that a positive or negative? 
that, that's a positive. Okay. Um, and the quarantine a bit. I don't want to put them at risk. They got their shots now, but I'm still being a little bit careful. But yeah, it's yeah. still fun to go do that. They can infect you if they've got their shots. They yeah, can carry it. Say, I it got to, you. to see my family. Not I had to see my family. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> Bordetella right. is scary. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like everybody had a good weekend. So let's talk about Traveler. Last time, and I have a whole page of notes as to what happened last time, but it was an interesting, <laughs> if that's not to say, uh, uh, game. You guys got the chance at the last 10 minutes of the game to come aboard the affronter ship Defenestrator and meet with Colonel Seventide. Dan, the, were you here last time? Of the affront. Yes. Okay. I knew you were here. Before before that. That. I don't think Andrew was here, though. Were you in there? I was not. I was drugged, and I was told that we were going for a cruise on the love boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind I of a love boat. And Julie, the cruise director. <laughs> the cruise director. You're like, hey, what happened to the general? Like, well, we that's don't want to that's this guy. This is Julie, the cruise director, right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so you guys, so you guys jumped from Ember. You picked up, you picked up a cargo of agricultural products from Ember, headed for right. Cymbeline uh, system. Was it cannabis? Uh, no, just regular. Uh, um, well, cannabis is legal, so I mean, yeah, probably it could be. It wasn't though. Um, uh, jump from Ember instead of going straight to Cymbeline, however, you jumped into deep space. The coordinates given into you by Palmer uh, of the location of his contact in the affront, Colonel Seventide. You jumped out there, and uh, uh, when you got there, you scanned the area. Jin scanned the area for ships, and you saw one in the distance about four astronomical units away, an enormous ship, 40,000 ton warship of the affront. Basically, uh, at 40,000 tons, that makes that ship roughly 200 times the size of yours. You, con you were contacted uh, by a human uh, uh, who apparently is aboard the, the Defenestrator, a man named Stefan Gross, uh, who uh, informed you that, um, you know, he was, you assumed he's some sort of human servant or some sort of human associate of, the, of uh, Colonel Seventide in the front, and informed you uh, that you, uh, that Colonel Seventide was awaiting you guys and uh, that you should approach and dock. You uh, docked inverted uh, against the, uh, against against the much larger ship uh, and um, were informed that uh, that suits would be required inside. The affronter body chemistry, so affronters are very different. As you can see the picture of Colonel Seventide over here. Um, they are a lot like 12 foot gas bag jellyfish. They float around in a low gravity environment. Uh, the atmospheric composition of which is primarily uh, methane uh, chlorates and subchlorates, which are, how shall I put this, inimical to human life. Um, and plus the temperature here is well below uh, what would be comfortable for humans. So you were advised to come aboard in suits, uh, pressure suits and environmental suits. You were also uh, given um, gravitic uh, boot strap on things so that you could walk. This was because the interior of the ship is very different than the interior of a human ship. Many human space vessels are, are in large part reminiscent of submarines. They're small, they tend to be, um, uh, you know, close, um, you know, not as bad as submarines, but they tend to be very practical from a, from a space standpoint. This affronter ship is very different. Um, for one, uh, hallways do not always have to be horizontal. They are often vertical, uh, you know, a front uh, a fronters float. Uh, many of the creatures uh, that inhabit a fronter ships that are not a fronters also float. Um, so there are a lot of uh, rooms that are um, vertical in, or hallways that are vertical or uh, rather than horizontal. Um, second, um, the rooms tend to be enormous. Uh, Affronters themselves are large creatures, uh, and they uh, they move around quite a bit. So um, the rooms themselves tend to be enormous. Very unlike the uh, the way the uh, the gin and tonic is set up. You guys went in through uh, through your cargo hold dock uh, and got into the ship. You were first led by uh, uh, Stefan, who led you uh, around the ship. You saw some interesting things as you were moving through the ship, uh, including um, uh, a, what looked to be a small sort of beat up uh, creature that was... Um, 
that was running away from something. And at, the, at one point within probably 15 meters of you guys, you saw laser fire as it essentially shot down this creature that was running. You also saw affronters. And these affronters, however, uh, looked very different than some of the larger. So, the, so you saw a couple of affronters before you met the colonel that were large. And they tend to have, well, the one, they have these very ornate uniforms on, festooned with all kinds of metals and ribbons. Uh, and uh, lots of what are obviously in many ways guns or firearms or, or various weapons of sorts. Uh, these guys seem to be the destriers of the of this ship. You also saw affronters that were uh, the only thing that you could say was maybe they were, they were much smaller. Um, you know, maybe only six to eight feet tall. Uh, they tended to not wear uniforms. They had a, what, a sort of weird sort of uh, um, polycarbonate coverall on that would, would occasionally have tools or, or implements of some sign that they would manipulate with their um, with their tentacles. But also, many of these seemed to have some very obvious injuries. Um, you know, some many of them were missing tentacles. Uh, some of them uh, had very obvious laser wounds on them, that kind of thing. They just looked, and some, some of them just looked beat up. Uh, and so you passed them. At one point, there was a creature that looked like a, uh, a mobile uh, uh, gyro meat uh, uh, tube with legs kind of scuttled across. Can I pose a question at this point? Sure. So I'm looking at them empathetically, sympathetically. Do I have any idea in the world how to treat them if I wanted to? An affronter? Well, you can call her that. I call her my girlfriend. Uh, that would be a <laughs> dangerous potentially thing to do. But um, I mean, you may have a very basic knowledge of affront physiology due to some study that you've done in the past. But as for like operating on one or providing first aid to one, yeah, uh, you would you would be very reluctant to do that, I think. But maybe Just, you could ask for a little uh, operational theater experience and um, or surgical theater experience. And All I'm trying to get is if we get into a situation where I need to say, hey, we look delicious, but I'm more valuable curing your fronteries. <laughs> <laughs> Eat them, not me. Right, exactly. I got you. The one thing that you did notice is that you didn't see any sort of robotic uh, uh, things. No robots, no cleaners, no uh, uh, no robotics of any kind that you could see. All of the, the, uh, the services that you could see, and you saw various kinds of creatures that were not affronters wandering about uh, mm -hmm. performing, performing various services, um, but uh, you didn't see any robots at all. Um, Another creature. So this is this is Stefan right here. Uh, you have only seen him through his mask on his suit. Uh, he's obviously not done any sort of uh, um, significant significant uh, genetic manipulation. That until you meet this guy who declines to give his name, but he was uh, outside of the um, of the room in which you met Colonel Seven Time, and he actually just was not wearing a suit, and it looked very clearly that that some genetic manipulation had done to him. This this is very sort of interesting to you, Doctor Wagner, because as you know, as a, as a surgeon and a student of genetics, you know that um, to do something like this would require multiple, uh, it would require, it would be a long-term effort. And it would also, oftentimes genetic manipulation of this kind is very painful to the person doing it. Uh, they would have to be significantly motivated to do. But he has certainly had enough genetic manipulation where he is able to operate comfortably uh, in the low temperatures and breathe the, the methane chlorates that make up the bulk of the atmosphere. So that was that was int very interesting to you, Doctor Wagner. Um, do I notice that his clothes are sacks with the the name Monsanto and <laughs> No, nothing like that. But he does seem to be unlike. Uh, a lot of the other creatures, including some of the other, the, the smaller affronters, he does seem to be wearing some sort of uniform. Now it's not as festooned with weapons and, and medals as the as the obvious as as the as the um, as the affronters are, but it does have a few uh, what could be insignia of some sort. I mean, you're not a military man, so I mean, it's like it could be insignia. And he uh, he does. I am a military man. You're a military man. I thought you were a yes, doctor. I, I I was a doctor in the military. Okay, well, they do look like insignias to you, but none that you've ever recognized. Certainly not Terran insignias. Okay. 
And uh, he does have a weapon, some sort of, uh, well, it looks like a laser pistol of some sort that's uh, attached to a rig at his hip. Uh, so he is armed, which is uh, different from uh, um, from every everything else. The only other creatures that you've seen having weapons are the larger affront, uh, affront creatures. Okay. I think you are, talking, I'm sorry, go ahead. This ship's about 200,000 tons, you say? 40,000 tons. Oh, 40,000 tons. So uh, maybe you could help me out with this. Exactly how many coins is that? <laughs> oh, you're killing deep me. Cut, Kill it. Deep cut. Killing me. I am oh, so done with that man. <laughs> I just can't. I couldn't. I had to go for a cheap shot. Sorry. Like. I would. I, 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 I'm ashamed to admit a little bit how much time I, and Excel spreadsheet work that I put in figuring that shit out this week. Uh, I, I was uh, right. The, the, I, I was the chief of I don't give a fuck. On it, but I, just well, was, I think Don, I was, Don just, was giving you a run for the money on that. Yeah, so, uh, I, I was I was just needling it on, especially with Gordon. Like, yeah, get him, Gordon. Hit him again. I'll hold his arms. <laughs> so yeah, Gordon, Gordon and I occasionally get into arguments about uh, about points of law, uh, and um, girls, and girls, very, you're both pretty. I know we're invariably <laughs> on the wrong the wrong side of history. So it's it's like I put in that one thing. Gordon's trying to maximize the amount of money you guys can take, and I'm trying to minimize the amount of money you can take. So yeah, so, yeah. So, I just want to get out of there live. I don't give an f about. I'm that. just looking around. I'm wondering where Crewman Oren is. Uh, yeah, where's Crewman Oren today? Um, he is in bed. He wow. went to bed. You know, I, I, I uh, we actually, um, the two parents, mom and dad, actually managed to um, have dinner on time <laughs> and do bedtime story and bath and b b bedtime routine in a timely manner. And Oren got to bed at nine o'clock. Wow, wow, that's awesome. Treasure, treasure these moments, Eric. <laughs> exactly. <Definitely laughs> treasure these moments. Yeah. They come to you. these moments. <laughs> you guys were then ushered into which, for by you know, I mean, your best guess as the as to the purpose of this room would be officers' lounge. Uh, there were several large affronters in here, all kind of uh, uh, clicking. You, uh, the, the uh, uh, you don't understand the affronter language, so you couldn't tell. It. They click their beaks at each other. It's, uh, it's uh, kind of weird. Um, but uh, it was, um, there were several affronters, and along the walls were these sort of weird padded racks where the large affronters could sort of nestle into them and sort of rest. They're not chairs by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but Fronters don't have asses, so they, you know, a, chair, a regular chair would be sort of useless for them. Um, and so there was several of these, probably a half a dozen of them. Two of them were engaging in some sort of contest that you saw uh, along the bulkhead, and sort of what it could be uh, was was pinned and literally pinned with with big metallic spikes was some sort of animal or creature. And two of the affronters were were taking turns shooting at it with with lasers that uh with uh affronter laser guns um in ways that as you looked you could see that it was designed specifically not to kill the creature but to come as close as possible to doing so without doing so so uh, without actually killing it um and so there was uh, there it looked to be that there was some wagering going on as well the affronters the two affronters engaging in this contest were um we're putting these, these sort of crystalline discs onto a table. And, you know, at one point, you know, various shots were being taken and somebody would take the discs, other discs would be put down and stuff like that. It looked like they were gambling. I mean, at least to your eyes, Mehmet, it, it bore the unmistakable sort of evidence of that. This was some sort of contest that they were gambling on. Do you hear the words Diddy Mao? <laughs> no, you did not. Okay. You don't hear any words. The uh, affronter language is mostly to your ears, and you right. do, you can't hear outside. It's mostly a, a clicking noise. Affronters have sort of like beaks and reminiscent of of like octopuses, uh, and so th those click th those beaks are slapping together and making a weird sort of clicking noise. Every once in a while, there's like a wheezing noise that you can hear where the affronters are emitting some sort of gas from their gas bags, which might be communicative, but as far as you know, uh, it's not. It's just flatulence. It could be. Uh, Stefane yeah. provides you uh, with, uh, he comes over the notice at one point and says, all right, I'm going to connect your, uh, I'm going to connect your, um, your neural lace to our system so that you can understand Colonel Seventide, at which point 
you hear this big booming voice come out. It's like, ah, it is my, my, the friends of my, my, the human friends of my human friend Palmer have finally arrived. Welcome to the Defenestrator. What do you think of my ship? And, uh, you know, you were like, you know, beautiful. oh, it's a great ship. It's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Like, yeah, it's it. awesome. No He's way. like, ah, <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, welcome you appropriately to, to the front. Is this the first time you have ever interacted with well, um, no. uh, a, a, uh, a colonel of my species? Yes. Yes. You're awesome. <laughs> so you are probably you are probably surprised at how uh, at, at how uh, um, a- amiable we are and how friendly. <laughs> yeah, Humans right. mostly are surprised at this. Yeah, I know. We've we... heard great things about you. You are. <laughs> I bet that Palmer has been very flattering towards me. He is a good human friend. I I prize his companionship when he is when he is available. Do tell me how how does he how is he faring? He's had better days, but he's he's still in there, you know, giving better than he gets. <laughs> Palmer, he is a good human. I have had many enjoyable times with him. Nice, yeah. I, well, I, I think I presented already presented the medal I was going to give him, right? Uh, yeah, you did. You gave him a medal, which he appreciated, and he was actually very curious. He's like, "Tell me, how did you earn this uh, this uh, this achievement in your in your uh, in your Terran Navy forces? Uh, was it for for the the murdering of many enemies? It was it was for it was for um, outstanding treachery and skill." With a with a pistol, with a with a small weapon. Ah, I can see. I know. I know the human anatomy. Your, your hands are very small, and so uh, obviously weapons must be, must be tailored to human size. But uh, I can see in your in your human eyes that treachery is one of your is one of your strongest points. I'm going to have to. Not, what is the human phrase? Not turn my back on you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a back, obviously, <laughs> for I am not a human. I think the word in your language is Drogato. Uh, <laughs> I have heard of this Drogato. You must leave my ship now by the <laughs> airlock. Uh, I just can't. I can't let it go. I'm sorry, Don. So basically, um, he's hey. a he's a very sort of hearty dude. Uh, seems very friendly. Uh, well, except for and, the, the, the torture and murder of little creatures all around us. He sounds like well, yeah. So he undated. so he sees. I see you're noticing my uh, my colleagues engaging in this small contest. This is something we do regularly uh, to keep our wits sharp and our uh, our shooting eye stalks even sharper. <laughs> You can imagine how important that must be if, to be an affronter. One never knows when a Kazinti might be lurking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'd have to kill them, obviously. I'm, I'm thinking uh, he's sort of like Jabba the Hutt as a jellyfish. A little he's more, kind, yeah. more cheerful. I mean, he's a little more. He's pretty cheerful, but um, he will. So he says to you guys, he says, I see you noticing this game, uh, this contest. And uh, he's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, is wagering known to humans? Oh, very much so. Some of us. Wait, wait, what's, what is this wagering thing you talk about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nicely, nicely played. Nicely played, Don. Yeah. You'll have to forgive me. I, I am not very educated on human culture. Among my people, I am uh, considered aberrant because uh, I find humans to be both interesting and, and convivial. <laughs> Many of my people would prefer to shoot humans and their kid uh, on sight, which I, but I will not, I will, I assure you, uh, uh, that almost certainly will not happen aboard this ship while I am. Almost certainly. <laughs> Les, so I think you should really think about casting off your own personality and take on this persona from now on. <laughs> Just at work yeah. tomorrow and my, yeah. my morning meeting, I'll be like, hello, humans! <laughs> I, I will destroy you and your family. <laughs> I almost assuredly may not kill you. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, ah, wagering is known among humans. That is excellent. We, uh, that's the affront, are, are excellent uh, uh, wagerers, and we love a good contest. So this combines both of these loves. Uh, we, uh, as you can see, we have found a, uh, a, a lesser creature, uh, and uh, we have uh, attached it to the wall over there. But, uh, as you could probably don't understand this contest, as you can see, my two colleagues are attempting to, uh, the, the wager is to do the uh, most significant uh, amount of damage and pain to the creature while as yet maintaining its life without killing it. As you can see, <laughs> and he looks over and points, <laughs> my, my friend Eightfold has just messed up and he's killed that creature. You see the creature sort of like 
you know, and it's missing limbs and stuff like that, just leaning against the wall. He's like, <laughs> he has lost a great wager there. Uh, I'm sure they will fetch another creature, though, and continue the contest. Since humans are such good wagerers, and, and, and uh, which, would you like to uh, perhaps place a little wager with me? I would on the like contest? to wager. I would like to wager that our friend, Dr. Coffin Doyle, can really bring that person almost to death without killing them. <laughs> Oh. I have seen <laughs> Dr. Coffin Doyle in no, you, action. Uh, is Coffin a doctor? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm going to uh, just, uh, I'm, I'm no a master of diplomatic savoir-faire, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm going to um, respectfully decline. Uh, uh, it's oh, nice darn. <laughs> Oh, but that is all right. I, you know, these, these petty contests, uh, I, I could, uh, I, I, I would be surprised if, if, uh, if, if you, uh, your first few hours aboard ship would protect. I have something much better in play. Uh, I really, for, I for really us. hope to arm him with just a spoon. <laughs> uh, the the uh, Don, isn't your character a degenerate gam gambler? Or am I, uh... Well, degenerate's a strong word, but. Uh... Oh, I know. I know he enjoys, he's an enthusiastic. Uh, uh, I, mean, I find it entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> I find it entertaining. I've taken an enjoyable moment here or there with, uh, with lay, laying the occasional it's, wager. It's, it's modest wager. Skill. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, uh, no, I would, I would not expect you to join in this contest. <laughs> we are fronters. Uh, this is one of our one of our favorite pastimes. <laughs> I, you know, as much and he kind of looks down at Coffin and he goes, as capable as this human seems. <laughs> I, I don't know that he could go up against the fronters. It's something that we do constantly. No, no, no. I have something planned for us, uh, a special entertainment for, for our human guests uh, that will come later. Uh, in the meantime, let, let's, uh, let's watch the contest as it goes on and, and take enjoyment from it. Uh, I apologize that uh, obviously I cannot offer you refreshments of any kind, but uh, I've put my, uh, my human uh, subordinate, Mr. Gross, uh, is is uh, is responsible for your uh, for your well being and health while you are aboard ship. So if there's anything that you need when you uh, remove yourself to the atmospheric portion of the, the ship that is suitable for humans, then uh, you need only ask him. He has his orders. Do you not, Mister Gross? Uh, yes, I do, sir. Thank you. Is there some sort of like Gallagher splash zone we can stand in while they're uh, torturing these these creatures? That, well, I mean, you're sort of in this lounge and like little floating chairs that are human sized. That you know, they're like bring over the you know bring the chairs for our guests, and they allow you to sit down. Now you guys are in suits, uh, like space right. suits, uh, and you're floating around. Your feet are sort of weighted down towards the ground because you have these gravitic boots on and but the affronters are sort of floating around they do end up bringing out another creature a similar creature and they just flat out just nailed this thing up to the wall uh and it's obvious that obviously a lot of the bulkheads are metal uh but this particular spot has some sort of overlay on it and as they pull the other one off you can see that it bears the marks of hundreds of these of these metal spikes uh this is something that you're guessing they do quite a lot of. And the wall itself is treated so that the spikes go in it. You can't put a metal spike through a metal wall. I mean, they I probably could. All of us have neural net now, except maybe Doyle, is that right? All right, for everybody else, I'm gonna to say top priority, don't end up as one of these creatures on the wall. <laughs> Let's just keep that in mind while we're here. Yeah. No lawful good. No, no, there's no lawful good up in this party. I think, but uh, <laughs> let's let's put that at the top of the priority. Is not end up as a, uh, a poor poor creature staked to a wall. Well, I think if there's two words that uh, um, that uh, sent a chill down your collective spines, it was the word special entertainment. Do I sense that these special entertainment entities might make a good delicatessen sliced meat? You're guessing no. I mean, from a, your from from a doctor standpoint, the likelihood that uh, well, f as you look at these creatures, the likelihood is that these creatures are probably from the same Genetto pool as the affronter. So probably from their home planet. Um, what you do know about the affront is that the way their culture built up, it was a lot more genetic manipulation than technological prowess. So what the affronters did, which is different from sort of Terran culture, Terran culture became very technologically proficient in the development of artificial intelligence and spacecraft, you know, and, and tools and neural lace. Whereas during the early portion, pre, uh, pre spacefaring days of the affronters, 
uh, they were very, they had, they had become their tech, their technology moved into sort of genetic manipulation and instruction. So you sus suspect that this creature that they are nailing up on the wall and shooting at is from, is not only from their home planet or their home system, but has been significantly genetically manipulated to suit certain needs. They, they maybe eat it. Uh, you haven't seen any, any, but any of them eat any of the leavings. They just have, there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of other creatures, not junior affronters, but other creatures that come in and sort of clean up after the, after the contest. So it's a pen you wear something that's stain resistant. Or don't create an apparent sense of what their purpose is. They're just blobs or. Well, they're not just blobs. I mean, they look sort of like big hairy spiders. They're about, um, but they've got something like 10 legs, uh, sort of all radial and, uh, you know, a big sort of meat sack in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. It does have something reminiscent to the gas bag that the affronters used to float around. So if, if released, these creatures probably could float within the uh, within the gravitic area or using their gas bags to to sort of float around. But uh, it's certainly not floating now. One of the things sense that they were bred for food or transportation or plumbing. Certainly not transportation. Uh, you don't... Give me a med check. Okay, if you insist. Is, is, is tonight's special entertainment Vogon poetry? Is, is that what we're going to be? <laughs> I'd love to hear some Vogon poetry, please. I love Vogon poetry. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> I'm assuming tonight's going to be oh, messy. So I'm going to scotch guard all my clothes to make sure it's stain resistant. Well, you're in a suit, so you don't have to, you don't, I mean, if you get on you, you could get, oh, true, get clean. Okay. So yeah, I needed 2d6 plus your bonus, plus okay. your med bonus. Forgot to log into roll 20. Let me do that now. Thirteen. Thirteen. Probably, I mean, it doesn't have any other obvious utility other than potentially food um but really it doesn't look like it's a food creature either it has a lot of legs and as the contest progresses you see that these guys who are who are who are gambling are are making a point of shooting off the legs and the laser sort of cauterize the the wound so the leg sort of just hangs downward but and you can hear the thing sort of through the ambient uh speakers you can hear the thing squeaking and and making a sort of like a high-pitched squealing noise uh, but honestly, you would not be surprised if these creatures were genetically designed specifically to have a lot of legs to be shot off. Wow. I, I, have, I for one, am grateful that humans only have four limbs. <laughs> well, well so, so far, so far, the reaction you've got, I mean, you've only really interacted with three people. One of them is Colonel Seventide. The, uh, the other two is, yeah, is Stephane and this other guy who has, who is not in the room right now. He sort of, he went back outside. He was sort of ushered you in and then left. Um, all of the other affronters and all the other creatures seem to be basically ignoring you guys. Um, you know, you've, you've gotten some looks from the other affronters like, oh, okay. Um, but Seven Tide is obviously, is very obviously in charge here. Uh, and there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a significant amount of not paying attention to the elephant in the room that's going on right now, which that you guys being the elephant. I mean, it's rare that five humans show up on an affronter ship in this way. So, uh, um, so the contest goes on. There's a couple more contests. And at one point you see something very telling and, and this is Don, give me a gamble check. Not as if you were gambling, just as if you were watching gambling, you want to see something like a gambling perception check. A gam section. I can't even speak. Well, you weren't given permission, of course not. <laughs> uh, nine. Okay, so uh, so what you notice is that at one point, Seven Tide actually joins in the betting. So after the first couple of creatures, and they and so they they finish off the one, and then they bring another one in. They nail that off, and uh, and that kind of stuff. And at one point, Seven Tide and a couple other guys sort of get involved in the gaming, and you know, Seven Tide's like, ah. Oh, I'll wager 200 on, uh, you know, this guy, on eightfold. <laughs> and uh, and he, uh, you get the impression that the other guy that would be on the opposite side of the colonel's bet purposefully missed his shot so that the colonel would win. Of course. Uh, he's doing for promotion, apparently. 
Well, I don't know what it is, but you know, so the Colonel uh, only bets occasionally. Uh, don't mess with the Colonel. Yeah, but basically, yeah, he's uh, whenever he bets, he wins, and it becomes increasingly clear, clear to you that beating the Colonel uh, in a bet is could be unhealthy. So he's a, he's a Kim Jong Il of jellyfish, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. He's the hold on, I got to tweet that. He's the Kim Jong Il of jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. Tweet Kim Jong Un of jellyfish. <laughs> so, um, gentlemen, I believe we're here to get weapons and also maybe to spend a little money to weaponize our ship. Um, I would love to talk about that when we have time. Um, also, um, Doyle, um, in his retirement, he, you know, he was used to be a captain in the Navy. Uh, uh, he has long disdained New World Lace, but he has seen you all in action and using New World Lace. And he's, he thinks, you know, I got to evolve as a person. I probably should, just for tactical, tactical reasons, I too should get new release. So at some point in our travels, um, one goal that Coffin has is to get, is to catch up with the rest of you and get lace. Sure, we can get you a do-it-yourself kit from Amazon. And... Don't, don't let Dr. Wagner hear you say that. <laughs> He'll be like, I've got a spare set. Yeah. Wake up I, an extra... That I ripped out of a woman's <laughs> melon. <laughs> I'm sure it'll work for you. And then you know, then we'll have some sort of like... Uh, you know, I saw that movie where they where they uh, uh, like took the, the the serial killer's eye corneas and right, gave right, them right, to right. a blind person, and she started seeing people oh, like murder Jessica victims. Alba. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah. I just saw her in the Hot Ones. She was hilarious in the Hot Ones. Uh, you ever watch the Hot Ones? Uh uh-uh. The YouTube no, show. No, but I should because I like Jessica Alba. The the Hot Ones is a, it started as a YouTube show, but it's gotten mainstream now. Where uh, basically a pretty good uh, interviewer, Sean Evans, asked people. These celebrities hard hitting, you know, like uh, quick, like less than softball questions, like deep cut questions about their life and their things, and goes on their Instagram. But while they're doing that, they go up progressively on on Scoville's on these uh, hot wings they're having. So you know, it's like this, it's like food porn. So that each one they go from like sixteen hundred <laughs> on the classic to about one point six million on the far end, and so many people just lose their mind. You know, like people who start all demure like uh, Charlie's Theron are just like swearing up a storm, like like God, oh, this fucking thing is killing me. And, uh, <laughs> so wait a second, with each success of question they eat a hotter hot wing a hotter hot wing oh you gotta see it. it's hilarious <laughs> Je- jessica out. alba's telling a story about how she's in, in in the blue remember that movie with the sharks and stuff where they're doing Pirate yeah. Treasure and paul walker and they're like the director's trying to get her to to uh she she's like sweating it already by the time the director's trying to get her in a in a tank with a shark that they've captured like just why don't you swim in front of it in this tiger shark for a second so we can film it and she's like uh, no, it's a live tiger shock. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck your face. I'm going to show her CGI this. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because she's like all demure and she's uh, swearing up a storm. <laughs> and they're all at home now, too. Like Jessica Alba's at home at that now. So, like, mommy, you know, her kids are off to the side there, whatever. So, anyway, I highly recommend uh, checking out the hot ones on YouTube. I, I think you'll find I, some. I'm going to check that out. Yeah. They're about right. 20 minutes a piece. After probably two hours of this entertainment um at some points at, at some point seven times like well, <laughs> well uh, I, you've been very you've been very uh, patient to to uh sit here with me and engage in small talk like humans do and watch our little contests <laughs> but you came here to talk business that is what uh, my human friend palmer informed me so uh stephane is uh, is there a room ready yes sir there is and uh, he's like all right follow me and he sort of like lifts himself off of his rack and sort of floats over to the to uh uh the the um a, a bulkhead door and through it uh with stefane sort of like walking on the wall next to it uh to get you guys to a room you guys go down a few uh, uh a few hallways and finally oh thanks uh and finally um you, you come into a room and you guys are the only ones there. Uh, there's a, more of those racks uh, around the room, but there are also racks of different size. So what it ends up doing is you end up, you ever been on the, you remember that thing at the old school carnivals that spins around really fast and you stick to the wall and the wall drops out? Yeah. The floor drops out? Oh, I forget what they call it. I forget what they call it. Tilt-a-whirl or something? Not the tilt-a-whirl, but yeah. It's Arms your, cluster. 
Tom's Twister flag. is the Six Flags version. Tom's Twister. Okay, so yeah, so basically what you end up doing is you end up settling into these racks like an affronter, but these racks are human size, and you see, and you actually see Stefane do it uh, first. And he's got his like his feet are against the back wall, so he's sort of stuck there, but he's also sort of like resting in this in this padded rack, and you guys sort of it takes you a second to sort of uh, get in there, and it's and a table sort of floats in uh, on on little controls, and um, He's like, all right, <laughs> well, let's talk business, shall we? <laughs> My human friend Palmer said that you would be interested in talking to me about uh, the acquisition of some guns. Is that, is that more or less the case? Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, I, uh, in addition to my, uh, obviously, my duties on behalf of the uh, the great affront Navy, uh, also am happy to uh, uh, provide uh, weaponry to all sorts of people, uh, including humans, especially my human friends. And now that I consider you my human friends, uh, I think that we uh, can certainly do business. Uh, do you know what you wish? Doctor, uh, sorry. <laughs> Captain Black, I believe this is where you and Eric need to step up here. I, I don't have any real opinions on weaponry. Uh, I'll be happy to talk up a storm and keep keep the negotiation going, but I don't really have any opinions on weaponry. Well, one of the key things is we need exterior guns that don't attract attention. We don't uh, want any that is obvious. I understand. I bet that was Mr. Jix's idea. <laughs> He's an expert in treachery, you know. Don't turn your yeah. human back to him. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I think that could be done. We uh, we actually uh, found that out. Obviously, we don't have a space dock here uh, on the uh, defenestrator that would be suitable for the sort of uh, the right. sort of uh, technological right requirements we had. Uh, we uh, uh, but I have contacts in the uh, in the Cymbeline sector that would uh, uh, that I can uh, make available to you. Uh, certainly uh, introduce you, and you would go there with my. Uh, with my recommendation. So I do not think that this would be uh, altogether out of the uh, ordinary. Do you have an idea of what sort of weaponry you would want? Uh, it is, uh, as your ship is quite small, um, the difficulty, when you have smaller ships, the difficulty of, uh, of uh, concealing weaponry of any substance becomes that much greater. Gentlemen, I just thought of something, actually. I said I had no opinion, but I actually do have an opinion. What we need besides <laughs> ship's weapons, we need something to deal with these, uh, um, these, in, you know these uh, transient uh, aliens that are blipping in and out of our ship with like little regard to reality or physics. Um, there's got to be maybe I don't know, there's some probing questions to ask. Like we have this, you know, either like an anchoring type of weapon to hold it in one place so we can finish it off in one phase, or uh, I'm just spitballing here, or some sort of weapon that can shoot and multi fit. You, as I recall, this thing f fades in and out, right? And you either hit it or you don't. It uh, well some yeah the, some of some of them that yeah you have where they where they're able to fade in and out or sort of dimensionally shift and right. when you I, I mean do you guys talk about this in front of in front of Seven Tide? Well, that's that's a question. I'm I'm thinking we're gonna have a quick little uh, convo, but we're like hey. One and remember, we well, also remember that if you're using neural lace, your neural lace is piggybacking on the defenestrator's oh, okay. uh, so, computer system. Got it. Got it. Okay, so we won't have any super secret convos. Um, it's up to you. I mean, he, do we he, want to have this conversation? I don't have everything to hide about this. I think we want to find out more about these creatures. We're not many. Yeah, uh, yeah to say what we just we just we'll describe what we've come across. We've never seen these before, but we're looking for something to uh, kind of like. A, I need a, a something a multi phase plasma rifle in a forty watt range. <laughs> I think we can accommodate that. <laughs> but these creatures that you describe intrigue me. Uh, I have never heard of such creatures, and frankly, the existence of them, of uh, exhibiting any sort of animal intelligence, could be uh, could be of of, of uh, that. This news could be of note to my uh, superiors in the affront, especially if they are uh, if if they have somehow made if they if they if the hated Kazinti somehow make some sort of alliance or or enslave these creatures. Why <laughs> anything could happen then? Please, if you would, while we while we discuss business. If you will tell me everything that you remember about these well, creatures, I'm I happy would be to very upload much genomic sequences of these creatures, but I, I that could be a, little, a lot uh, of time and effort, and would require some sort of remuneration or weaponry in return. Hmm, perhaps we can uh, make an arrangement of sorts. I believe that I would be willing to take this sort of information as partial payment for what you are requiring, as a we from a weapon standpoint. <laughs> Because I love dealing with humans. 
Okay. Oh, I, I think it will be more than partial payments. I yeah, think you'll end up owing us even more for this valuable information, which is sequenced down to the DNA genomic level and will give you very precise targeting information on the cellular structure and teach you how to deal with them, which is something we definitely need and can work together on. Hmm. Yeah, I, you, you I drive I a that. hard bargain, Mr. Wa Dr. Wagner. <laughs> you are rapidly becoming my favorite human. My wife used to tell me that. <laughs> well, several of my wives have told me that instantly, right, right, usually right before I have to kill them. Ah, <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah. who, who among us, right? <laughs> well, considering your personal weapons, I think uh, uh, we can certainly accommodate you. We have a wide array of human, uh, human styled weapons. Do we not, Mr. Gross? Uh, yes, we do, sir. Uh, <laughs> we are certainly in a position where we would be happy to sell them to you. We also carry various kinds of body armor, military equipment, uh, esoterica, uh, that you might require. Obviously, uh, we cannot, uh, in good conscience, uh, sell them to our enemies. So you must assure me that you are no friend to the Kazinti. Do I have your assurance, humans? Yeah, My human friends? You have Let's our hug. assurance. We yeah. hate them as much as you hate them. Ah, that is good to hear, and I think that will make the special entertainment I have planned for you even more entertaining, right. if that is even possible. I love nice. entertainment. Um, yeah. Kill Gazinti. Coffin yeah. Doyle is ready to pinky swear. He is no friend of the Kazinti. Do we know what do Excellent. we know what Kazinti look like? They're not gonna like bring no. out like a box they're, se of they're seven foot tiger people. Okay. I thought they bring out like his box of puppies that are all cute and they start hammering them with their. <laughs> no, the Kazinti. Uh, yeah, no, the Kazinti are the traditional Kazinti of uh, Star Trek fame. So uh, when I created this campaign, uh, I stole liberally from a variety of sources. Please, and right. uh, and so the Kazinti in the affront, uh, uh, when they first. Uh, the, the problem with. And let's, let's go very quickly to the star chart mm -hmm. because this will help illustrate this. I can show you the stars. I'm a Leo. What is my day going to look like tomorrow? It's going to suck. <laughs> oh no. You will be tacked to a wall with your limbs shot off one by one. It is going to suck. All right, so here you see, so you guys are right here in, in essentially what is a front or controlled space. These three red areas, Loki, uh, a Dismal, and this one right here, this empty one, are the two systems that the affront come from. Uh, over here, Forlorn, Inferno, and Hades, and these are colloquial Terran names. This is not the names that the affront uh, call, uh, the, the affront uh, call their home system Isoluria. Um, but uh, these are the Kazinti systems. The problem is twofold. One, proximity. Uh, these two starfaring, uh, these, these, two, uh, these two races became starfaring races around the same time. And, uh, and so uh, there, it was obvious that in, in large part, had they not been uh, contacted previously by Terrans, um, they would have run into each other uh, probably first. Um, that would be bad because from a cultural standpoint, the affront and the Kazinti are guaranteed to hate each other. And they do with uh, with a passion. So uh, because they represent sort of like two sides of the same martial coin, right? The Kazinti and the Affront are 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 very warlike races. Uh, they prize military prowess above uh, above almost anything. Um, they are expansionist uh, in their thing. They seek to expand their spheres of influence and expand you know uh, their own territories. Um, but and they differ culturally in in ways that would make them hate each other too. So uh, the Kazinti have a culture that is kind of reminiscent of uh, Tokugawa uh, Japan, the samurais. They have a they have a very strong martial culture. What do you got there? Gotcha. Nice. They have a very strong martial culture that is reminiscent of samurais. Individual prowess in in battle. The affront the are. Oh, nice! Uh, you paid all uh, what about eight fifty for that, or? Yeah, it was like fourteen bucks, but it was nice. And still, for scotch, it's a hell of a deal. Oh yeah, um, the the affront. Uh, they are they are collectives, but they are also um, you know they're both the end result of apex predators, right? Ev evolution of apex predators. So yeah, they hate each other and they want to kill each other. And when they met, it was hate at first sight. Uh, and it's everything to do that the Terrans can do to keep them from each other's throats. They are actively involved in a shooting war right now. So, um, but you know what they say about uh, about space battles? Uh, every space battle is uh, takes place by mutual consent. So, um, you know, there's uh, uh, 
there's, there's you know it's you know, like like any space war instances are few and often far between but yes, uh, Sevatide hates the Kazinti and wants to make sure that you're not going to be any sort of Kazinti uh, uh, sympathizers. Uh, and uh, having said and demonstrated that you are not, he is even more pleased. So, but yes, he's like, well, well it sounds like uh, that uh, you aren't 100% uh, assured of what exactly you want to uh, you want to take from us, uh, or to buy from us, and that's fine. Uh, you know, oftentimes when I deal with uh, with humans, uh, they uh, <laughs> and, I, and I'm certainly sympathetic. They want to feel the steel up against their what do they call them? Uh, the the uh, the area where your uh, where your uh, tentacle attaches to your trunk. Uh, this uh, area, Stephen. Gross. What is that called? It's called a shoulder, sir. Ah, the steel against your shoulder. <laughs> well, uh, as I said before, I've arranged a special entertainment, which I think you will very much enjoy, which will allow you two things. One, to be entertained and, and have an enjoyable time while you are my guests aboard your ship. And two, to allow you the chance to try out some of this weaponry uh, in, in furtherance of your, uh, your decision-making process. Does that sound amenable? Yes. Great. Yes. Uh, Excellent. Mr. Gross, prepare them. Uh, uh, we will meet. Uh, prepare them. I, I, uh, I must uh, uh, repair to my quarters to prepare for, uh, prepare for the special entertainments. <laughs> but I will see you soon. Mr. Gross will inform you about uh, everything that you need to know uh, as, we, uh, as we go into the hunting preserve. <laughs> I'll see you soon. And, and with that, he sort of floats out. Seven Tide floats out. How do you spell Seven Tide? I'm just putting on my uh, nose. Seven Tide, T-I-D-E. Okay. It's spelled L O S E R. That's it. Loser. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would never say that about our, our uh, good friend here because uh, he's always listening. Always watching, Lebowski. Always watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Stephane, sort of after Seven Tide <laughs> leaves, he sort of looks at you and says, um, The Colonel has a, um, as you obviously are aware this ship is very large and it has um, several um, several sections uh, for which um, the gravity and the atmospheric content are uh, ha have been altered to accommodate um, you know various races that, uh, various non affronter races. Uh, one of the largest areas is a um, is a section um, which is uh, the atmosphere and the gravity uh, is suitable for Terrans. It's not perfect for Terrans, but it's suitable. It certainly won't hurt you, uh, and you'll be able to breathe freely. What the colonel is doing right now is um, getting his own atmospheric and pressure uh, uh, equipment ready so that he can join you. Uh, what the special entertainments today will consist of is the colonel has created, uh, well, let me start by saying that one of the uh, um, most favored pastimes of the front is hunting. They love to hunt uh, and they have en enormous hunting preserves in their home systems and on their planets. Um, this is a hobby that almost every, uh, every uh, uh, um, senior affronter uh, does. Um, because they spend so much time in space, uh, they uh, have to find ways to bring their hobby with them. And so what the Colonel has done here on the Defenestrator is he has created a hunting preserve um, that is uh, that he has stocked with genetically modified Terran tigers um, because they are, uh, into his eyes, the root stock of Kazinti. He's also created an atmosphere and uh, atmospheric pressure and gravity situation as well as temperature that mimics the Kazinti homeworld. Um, it is the Colonel's fervent hope that someday the affront will uh, attack and deploy ground troops onto the Kazinti homeworld to hunt down the last remaining vestiges of their of, of the Kazintis on their own uh, on their own home planet. And his hunting preserve is designed to emulate that experience. What he would like you to do is to join him uh, and hunt a few tigers in his personal preserve. This is a great honor. Uh, many of his senior staff have never seen, let alone hunted within his hunting preserve. Okay, I, I, I would think we would be honored to be part of this party. Uh, what sort of weaponry would we be using? And when you say genetically modified, what are we talking about here? Like, uh, these, well, the Terran, uh, Terran tigers, as you know- level killers? Okay. Well, these are so these are larger, and uh, they have been genetically modified to be large, but they are still quadruped. So no, they are they. Um, 
they they uh, have not been modified to uh, look exactly like Kazinti, uh, but they are very large, essentially um, uh, up up gunned Terran tigers. What exactly is the risk to us, uh, poor pink fleshy humans here, Mister Gross? You can see him sort of smile grimly. He's like, "Well, if you see a tiger, I would recommend that you shoot at it." Well, <laughs> my experience is, is that the tiger that killed you is not the one you saw. <laughs> These also, uh, uh, many of the t- tigers, uh, historically speaking, the tigers of a half a half a millennia ago on Terra uh, were solitary hunters. These have been genetically modified for intelligence as well. So. Uh, they have been known to uh, hunt hunt in small groups. Oh, I, I see. So what what Les is describing here is a clever girl scenario, <laughs> where one tiger is hanging out front, while the other tiger is about to rip my throat out from behind. Hey, uh, uh, Captain Black, I think you're going to have a great time. You and uh, Captain Doyle are going to have a great time on this. I, I feel like Hammy right here uh, has been giving me a little trouble. I think the doctor needs a look at it. Uh, I don't know if I can keep really it healthy for this. Great, great. great. Uh, no, Tam, Tam no. definitely going to want to go too. I know for sure. No, I actually have a gun. Um, so. Mr. Ghost, what what kind of weaponry are we issued for this yeah. hunt? There. Mr. Well, he says like I could take you to the. Uh, let me take you to the armory, and we'll get you outfitted. Great. So uh, you guys move through the ship, and at one point you pass through a very large lock, and you begin to feel the effects of ambient gravity take hold. In fact, the gravity is a little stronger than you're used to, um, uh, because uh, as uh, uh, Stefane points out, it is designed to mimic the gravity levels on the Kazinti home planet. Um mm-hmm. You get into an area. There's the there's the traditional sort of venting of the of the atmosphere as you rotate through, and then you w- step back out. At which point, uh, Steve Ain says, uh, "You may remove your helmets. Uh, the air is uh, uh, perfectly safe to breathe for um, for humans, unless unless there's something you want to tell me about your uh, current physical capabilities." Don't do it, guys. <laughs> it's a trap. Um, he takes off his. He's like. <laughs> Yep. Off his this, own uh, when you say heavier gravity, it's not, it's not, shouldn't be uh, any. It's about one point four. It's about. It's a okay. little heavier gravity. Um, I would just say de- detriment to like shooting things is probably not. It's not going to slow our reflexes, right? So, I would whatever. think so. No, I mean I don't know that you'll be there in there long enough for it to be. You wouldn't want to necessarily. If you slept in this area, you would probably maybe wake up a couple of times a night with feelings of like you're suffocating. You know, the pressure on your chest, that kind of thing. Um, but as far as moving around, you're not. You're in no danger of falling and injuring yourself. That's how I sleep every night on the ship. That's why I drink so much scotch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he takes you into what is obviously an armory, and there is a, a coffin. You and you and uh, you and Black look around, and you are surrounded by guns, um, and they are. Uh, as you guys both recognize, and I guess most of you will recognize as being military men, you guys will recognize that these are military weapons. Stefane says, um, Colonel Seventide has has made recommendations on, on weaponry for each of you uh, based on what he was able to find out about you f- uh, um, through uh, through your uh, ship's AI and um, uh, basic, uh, you know, uh, um, background information that he's done. Um First, is everybody sort of like take off their suits and everything? Because there's like these these um, camouflage coveralls. They have sets of camouflage coveralls for you that they say will be helpful in the uh, in the preserve. Okay. I I take off my environmental suit. Okay. Yeah, it's warm too, and it, and there's a bit of a burnt burny smell. I guess is the best way that you could describe it. The the air has sort of like an ashy smell, sort of like scorched something scorched. Uh, but it's not, uh, I mean, it's not overbearing. Uh, it's a little warm, probably about 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in this area. Uh, Stefane seems comfortable with it. He doesn't uh, have any problems with it. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought, is Don signaling me or something? I wasn't sure oh. what you were doing. Um, so the first Stefane comes over, he selects a, a weapon off of the uh, thing which you recognize. He steps to you, Captain Black, and he says, uh, sir, you will probably recognize this as a um, a heavy laser rifle, standard Marine compliment. Um, yeah. My understand, uh, Colonel Seventy's understanding is that you would be familiar with such a weapon. Uh, yes. Okay, so he hands that to you. It is a heavy laser. Um, let me just uh, go in here and. And if I have zero skill in these, I just get no bonus, but I can still shoot it, right? Sure, it's got a trigger. 
I can point and I can shoot. Point and shoot, yeah. Uh, so uh, heavy laser great. rifle. Guys, guys, because Zinti already got Gatto. <laughs> <laughs> got, 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 got Docker. <laughs> He's under attack. Tan Tam is under attack. It's genetically <laughs> modified. Eating his face. <laughs> All right, so the, hev the heavy laser rifle you will remember is intended typically for snipers who hunt heavily armored targets, uh, but is equally well suited for targeting light vehicles. Power pack is integrated into the weapon itself. No heavy backpack necessary. Uh, it has a magazine of 12 shots, uh, a scope. It functions in zero G, and it does six dice of damage when it hits. We'll take six. <laughs> well, uh, so Tam. I love that. <laughs> you might be able to. I mean, if that's what you want. So Tam, uh, uh, he hands you, Stefane looks at you, and he says, uh, uh, um, the colonel uh, thought that this might be preferable to you. Uh, and he hands you a mag rail rifle. Uh, a mag rail rifle uh, follow the principles of electromagnetic induction. Basically, they accelerate projectile tiles similar to Gauss weapons, but they utilize, instead of a flechette, they utilize an ovoid uh, projectile, sometimes called a disc or a shuriken, uh, which is uh, great for short range, but um, uh, is, is not very good at penetrating armor. Nice. Then to Coffin, he says, uh, Mr. Doyle, as security chief, obviously uh, something uh, you, uh, the colonel thought you might enjoy something special. And what he has provided to me, he goes over and picks up this cool looking rifle off of the rack. Uh, this is called a uh, industrial grade beam splitter staggered laser rifle. Uh, it uses an industrial grain beam splitter to create an automatic fire effect from a single powerful laser pulse, basically uh, multiple shots. Uh, while reducing the energy of each individual shot, it allows a supporting role. Essentially, it is a laser light machine gun. I love it. It carries, a, try. it carries a magazine of 100 shots, uh, shoots, um, shoots uh, four shots around, uh, and each of those do five dice plus three when they oh, hit. Shit. <laughs> I'll take five. <laughs> uh, uh, and, um, uh, Mr. Gross, I, I, I um, was wondering if I could look into your um, selection of armor as well. Of course. Uh, we have several kinds. Uh, I'll be happy to show them. Let me uh, let me uh, spread out all the uh, rifles here. Um, for Mr. Jix, uh, we have now. We are understanding is that uh, you prefer a lighter weapon. This is a Gauss sniper rifle. Uh, obviously, use Gauss technology. Um, it is a long range. Uh, a more precise shooting uh, rifle. Uh, it has a light amplification scope, passive infrared, a visual magnification, and a, a laser range fighter, uh, and shoots a, a four gram flechette. Uh, it has a magazine of 12 of these flechettes, uh, and each of them, it, you have a range of about 1,000 meters, and each of them does 5D6. It is a this, precision weapon. This is like uh, this was like the if the Wizard of Oz was a was a weapons and was an arms dealer. <laughs> You're like, okay, Scarecrow, I saved you for last. Here's a bazooka. <laughs> And finally, Dr. Wagner, uh, our understanding is that as a medical professional, you deal with cryogenics uh, quite a bit, and uh, you uh, um, have some experience there. So uh, they have provided for you a, uh, a uh, cryogenic rifle, which shoots, hold on, I got to find it. It's gonna, I've almost got it here. It uh, shoots a cryogenic rifle. A cryo rifle. Uh, it basically takes cryojet technology and miniaturizes it on a on a rifle frame. Uh, it is very good uh, uh, against uh, armored individuals, especially heavy armor. Uh, if a target wearing any kind of sealed armor is struck by a cryo rifle, it has to make a strength check or be frozen in place. Uh, it has a magazine of twelve shots. Uh, each shot uh, is a blast of. Um, uh, super frigid hydrogen, um, which impacts uh, uh, impacts the target for 4D of damage on a, a successful strike. Andrew, I'm going to be really disappointed if you don't do some uh, Mr. Freeze quotes every time you fire that thing. <laughs> Everybody well, cheer. Cool, but uh, I'm curious. <laughs> because, uh, I see what you did there. With my research, those those shells will go pretty quickly. How easy is it to get more 
And what do they cost? Oh, we'll bring we'll bring spare magazines for uh, and spare power packs for all the weapons. How many? Uh, into the you, you mean supply. how many will we bring into the uh, into the preserve? Well, yeah, what do we get for our uh, efforts for our information? Oh, this is separate. Oh, from we that. Have, yeah, this is separate from that. We're this not. Is uh, tiger, you're just, this is yeah. You're just testing them out today. Tomorrow oh. we'll talk. Tomorrow, you know, next time we'll talk business. It's typically, business. This is trying to keep a tiger off your ass. <laughs> typically, this uh, these these weapons cost around six kilo credits. Damn. Each. Okay. Well, as long as these shots don't count against the load I get when I leave, sure. Let's have some fun. No, no, these are these are uh, these are just testers. They're you know, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna hunt some yeah. tigers. Hey, hey, Les, I'm requesting some sort of shot off shotgun too. Uh, you know, I like to keep that for close encounters. Of course, uh, there is actually they have several shotguns. Uh, although they seem um, a little bit, considering the the weapons that uh, that you've got in your hands, they seem uh, an, an, an antiquated. I like it for close encounters. <laughs> but yeah, if you wish to carry a shotgun with you, we can do that too. This, yeah, uh, a sawed-off shotgun, something short, stubby, tucks into like a, a leg holster. Would anybody prefer a, a shotgun as well, or perhaps a, a, a laser pistol to carry with them? Sure. In case you are required to commit suicide, to prevent yeah. any further uh, any further pain or suffering on your coffin. Behalf. Coffin, you do me, I do you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three ways out. Okay, so they uh, so uh, he hands he hands Jix a uh, essentially a sawed off twelve gauge shotgun and uh, provides a small belt filled with shells. It's got about twenty shells on it. Uh, pretty simple, uh, you know, to 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 load and use. Not uh, not complicated. Um, as far as pistols, the rest of you, he uh, provides a uh, a series of pistols, and he asks you, would you prefer would you prefer slug thrower or laser to each of you? Laser. Laser. I okay. Like laser. 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 Okay. And um, hey, uh, Mr. Gross, if you have a another sawed off handy um, sawed off twelve gauge, I, I would like to um, try one of those two, please. Of course. And he, he hands one to you. <laughs> Good All idea. right. And then he hands along uh, some laser laser pistols. Um, this is great. Uh, these these pistols have advanced battery technology. Uh, it's no larger than a conventional firearm. Uh, he also, but he does have to advise you that as part of the holstering mechanism, there is a battery pack on your belt, uh, and to fire, it has to be connected to the battery pack. The pistols themselves are too small to contain uh, a battery of sufficient size for the energy. They will uh, they 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 uh, have hundred shot battery packs, magazines, so you shouldn't run out. Uh, uh, they do um, they do about three d three damage. Good deal. Nice. Nice. This is great. Okay. Now let's talk it. armor. So ship weapons done uh he basically says look i can, you know we can provide those but what i'm going to do we don't we don't have the the um the capabilities on our ship to retrofit a terran a terran cargo vessel with concealed weapons what he's going to do is he's got contacts in cymbeline that do this and he's going to basically say uh I'm going to put you in touch with my guys in Cymbeline. Right, that's for later. Okay. That's for later. But today, but for as far as personal weapons and things like that, uh, this is, you know, he's got, he's like, I can, I can, I can hook you up. This is for us testing weapons and not get dead. That's the, that's the job one here is focus on that. I don't want to be torn apart by, by Tony the Tiger today. Uh, is all the weapons satisfactory? Do you guys need anything else? Armor. Armor. Yeah. Armor. Oh, and I'm gonna have a short conversation with my with sweetness too, my body pistol, and let her know that you know, don't be jealous. Right. Yeah. No, no. You're so still my favorite. He takes you into a different room of this environmental area or envi this armory area, and essentially what he's got, he's got. Look, we've got environment suits. Uh, most of our. Um, armor, unless you're, unless I mean, is, he's like, is anybody trained in the in the use of powered armor? Um, maybe, uh, let me see. Uh, armor? 
Is that what it's no. called, or is it just armor? Well, it's armor. It's so basically, I, it's, I it's not, neuro, neural kinetic no. feedback loop. It's it's uh, it's it uses your neural lace uh, and essentially enhances strength, dexterity. The armor itself becomes a sort of exoskeleton that allows you to do stuff. His guess is that you guys are probably looking for something that is a bit more passive, um, mm. which he can provide. So uh, what he, he got can do? Dope ass cloak. That's all I got. Is a dope ass cloak. Um, that was awesome, so, buddy. Well, Les, the reason I'm asking is I have vac suit, and I know that vac suit is required for some armor. So yeah, so you probably have some power armor experience, although it might be. Do you? Uh, so you would raise your hand and say, "Yeah, I have power armor experience." Yes. Okay. So he. So for the rest of you, he's going to give you an opportunity. He says, "Look, we have ceramic combat armor, and we have uh, uh, metal synthetic combat armor." Um, Ceramic is better. You guys know that ceramic is better uh, more against um, lasers and flamethrowers and things like that, whereas combat armor, a me metal synthetic, is better for, uh, you know, slug throwers and things like that. Okay. And if he's like, but whatever you, whatever you choose to want, I know that you guys are sort of kicking the tires and lighting the fires here. So uh, if you want to try either one, whatever you like. Uh, you could also just do a, a, a fairly simple combat environment suit if you wanted to do that ballistic cloth um i don't for the for the creatures that are within the preserve probably combat armor is best um but uh they are capable creatures hmm. yeah I'll, I'll wear what he recommends then i don't want my throat torn out do they have any sort of a throat tearing out technology uh anti anti throat tearing <laughs> technology on them well the, the the armor has has gorget to it so it will right, cover your you. throat so uh will what will it um will it suffice to protect you from the jaws of a 12 foot tiger i don't know <laughs> they're great <laughs> now from a, power armor, from a power armor standpoint he looks at you and he says probably what you so he first of all he points out the pressure sleeves you're going to need that probably there's ceramic powered plate we can do grab enhance but the gravity you won't need probably what you want is some sort of the standard power uh, uh powered plate armor basically a large suit of insulated power armor made of metallic plates forming complete body shell uh it's tough inflexible um and as long as you have energy you get uh increased strength uh however it is a little bit difficult to move around in so your dex is penalized do you feel like a cut paladin in your, in your plate armor is that something you would be interested in trying Dan? Not me. No. I thought you were the one who was looking for power armor, no? Yeah, but that... Sorry, was there another choice? <laughs> well, yeah, you could have regular non-power, passive uh, armor. Uh, so the yeah, only power armor always... Yeah, I mean, the big difference between armors is power versus no power, right? Um, obviously, the non-powered armor... A powered armor is basically... An, an, it's, it's a robot suit. Um, it's power. It's got its own energy source. It increases your strength. Uh, there is a small penalty to dexterity as you're kind of clunking around in power armor, but it's essentially an exoskeletal suit. Uh, whereas the other types of armor is just like clo clothing, essentially. You're, it's, it's under your own power. Whereas power armor, you're enhanced. So it's much heavier. And is it much, much more expensive on that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we like an order of magnitude. I think I'll be fine. You're just going to do regular old uh, metallic unpowered okay. armor? Regular old, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, so you guys suit up. Uh, just to give you a, uh, a bit of, from a game standpoint, the uh, combat armor is going to provide you a DR of 17, essentially. So keep 17? that in mind, 17. Okay. I, I didn't write it down, but I want to write it down now. My weapon, if you have a handy, my weapon was 5d6. Is that right? If I So, yeah, you have a Gauss sniper rifle, um, which does, yeah, five damage. It has a range of 1,000 uh, meters. Uh, it does 5d damage on a successful hit. It has a magazine of 12 and a scope. It also has light amp, uh, passive infrared, uh, you know, visual magnification, and a laser range fire to paint the target. Uh, okay. So it's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a really nice long distance weapon. It fires a four gram flechette. It looks like a little uh, Star Wars, or not Star Wars, a little Star Trek combadge. It's in that sort of arrowhead shape. Okay. 
Nice. I'm I'm a uh, thousand yards is about where I feel safe from these twelve foot tigers. So but yeah, it's a uh, five uh, D damage. So um, thank you. The and what was that? I'm sorry, the, the combat armor was that? I was just writing that down too. Dr. Seventeen. You. Now, uh, Tam, your Magrail rifle has a range of about 150 meters. Uh, it has a magazine okay. of it has a magazine of 30 and does 4D plus uh, uh, three damage. Sorry, that range. Uh, I was reading that wrong. The range is. Oh, did, did I say 150? Yeah. Okay. It essentially works on Gauss principles, but it throws a differently shaped mm. object. It's more of a, a disc as opposed to a arrowhead. What's What's the damage? 3D6. 4D plus three. Sawed-off shotguns, by the way, have a range of 10 uh, meters. They do 4D damage, and they hold six shots before you have to reload. All right. Uh, okay. Heavy laser, heavy laser rifle, which is what Captain Black has. Uh, range 1,200 meters. 60 damage, magazine of 12 shots before you have to uh, uh, power pack up. Um, and it does, did I say 60? Yeah, it does 60 damage. Six, yeah, 60. And then uh, coffin, I gave you, oh, you got the staggered. So you basically have a, a, uh, a light mach laser machine gun. Uh, it has a range of 400, does 5D plus three damage, uh, shoots four around, uh, and the magazine holds 100 shots. Magazine 100, magazine 100 shots and the range again. I'm sorry. 400 meters. 400 meters. Thank you. Got it. And then who did I skip? Oh, wait. When you said 150 for me. Wagner. When you said 150 for me, was that meters or? Meters. Um, wow. Okay. The problem is, you're guessing, is that, uh, well, where do tigers live? They live in jungles, right? Yep. So I doubt that that you're going to get a lot of sniper opportunities, uh, Weber. I have a feeling that these confrontations between you and Tigers are going to be close up and personal. So I want a shotgun. Shotgun. Yeah. All right. And then the cryo rifle, range of 10 meters, damage of 4D, uh, 4D6. Uh, magazine holds 12 shots. Um, and I think that's all you need to know. Thank you. And it will it will uh, it will tend to freeze creatures, so it's possible that uh, it will freeze these tigers. All right, I'm t <laughs> that sounds like an awesome weapon. Uh, so at that point, uh, uh, Stephane says, "Is everyone ready?" And let's uh, let us adjourn uh, to the um, to the preserve. So you guys uh, basically get walked down there. Uh, by Stephane, and you find yourself at a locked door, and that guy, uh, the tentacle head guy, uh, is there, uh, sort of standing in front of what looks to be a big sort of double doors leading into a uh, into the thing. And let's let's go to the map, shall we? And Dan, uh, I don't want to hear you doing, and Eric, I don't want to hear any laughing from you. All right. <laughs> it's all black. Okay, good. It's all black. That's what it should be. All right. But uh when you when you guys bottom is not. All right. So you can you guys see your guys? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, cool. So you guys just sort of wander about here and you can see these doors that the guy is standing in front of are clear, and you definitely see some sort of foliage or something, but it looks like uh something of a garden path uh going in. About that time, uh uh uh, Colonel Seventide shows up and he's like, ah, <laughs> you are all ready, I see. Excellent. You have chosen well. I see you gone with the recommendations I had. I hope you'll forgive me. <laughs> of course, I need no forgiveness, but I did. I checked you guys out and I selected weapons and I informed Mr. Mr. Gross to uh, uh, offer you a particular weapon because I felt it would match your human personality. <laughs> I hope I chose correctly. Did I? Is everyone pleased with their with their uh, with their selection? Perfect. I salute you. Mr. Tam, you look like you're in pain of some sort. Did you oh, injure yeah. yourself? Um, Excellent. Uh, as you can see, he is loaded for bear. So, so he is exposed. A lot of his uh, uh, jellyfish 
uh, parts are exposed. But he has this big wraparound thing on his face. So you, when you hear him, it's obviously coming through vocoder and and uh, and stuff. He also has uh, he's he's got some tanks on him, which is obviously your guess is it's pumping uh, atmosphere in there. Uh, he has a what looks to be some sort of gravity belt that's keeping him. I mean, he can't he's got tentacles, he can't like walk. Uh, so he's using a gravity belt to sort of float him along at about uh, three or four feet off the ground. Um, and but he is also festooned with weapons. He's changed out of his uh, military uniform, so he doesn't have any of the stuff. Although, Weber, you're pleased to see he is wearing the medal that you gave him on his uh, his mimetic camouflage. Uh, uh, sort of the, the the material that he is wearing is sort of this weird mimetic camouflage that changes chameleon like you know, to, to face behind him. But he's wearing the medal you gave him from uh, earlier, earlier that day. <laughs> Are you ready to hunt some cause it, I mean, uh, Terran tigers? Yes? <laughs> Ah. Is everyone is everyone ready? ready? Has everyone uh, stopped by the little humans room before we go in? Do we, <laughs> once we go in, we won't be able to stop. <laughs> I, I plan to shit myself in my suit when I see a tiger. <laughs> well, you're not. Well, you guys aren't wearing suits. You're wearing armor. armor so you're right, breathing. Yeah. You're breathing the atmosphere. So they basically created an environment in the ship specifically to mimic the atmosphere. And so Kazinti's breathe. The, uh, you know, a uh, uh, nitrogen uh, oxygen environment, very close to what humans breathe. Um, so their environment, although their home planet is a little is a little warmer than Earth standard uh, and a little junglier, um, you know, much and a little higher gravity. Much of much of what uh, uh, I mean, you, you certainly can breathe their their atmospheric needs. Um, it's interesting that Seven Tide has created this hunting preserve specifically to mim mimic Kazinti terrain i'll be right back um, okay sure are you going to the little humans room? the little humans room. <laughs> you had to bring it up yeah <laughs> if anybody has to go now's the time i think dr wagner is there now because i don't see him on the board where is dr wagner were you missing last time you were missing last time let me go grab yeah. you sorry about That'll that I, I apologize profusely where is our good friend, Mr. Wagner? Mr. Wagner, I'm assuming you are bringing uh, a, uh, a various um, kinds of first aid equipment, uh, as you do on a tiger hunt. Oh yes. Okay, good. I figured you would. You don't seem like the kind of fella that goes into a tiger hunt half cocked. No, plenty of opioids. Excellent, excellent. Okay, there you are. Yeah. So here's Stephane. Uh, he informs you that he will not be entering the enclosure. That it, that he says it in a very this very weirdly obsequious way, where he goes, "That that privilege is not mine to have." Um, he's like, ha, ha, "Darn tooting, it's not, you idiot." <laughs> uh, these are for my human friends of my human friend Palmer. So, uh, Mr. Gross, you are dismissed. Back to uh, whatever human style hovel you have at your end of the ship. Uh, this guy, so uh, Stefane sort of like gets out of there. He's like, I wish you all a very good luck uh, and good hunting. Uh, and then he bolts. Uh, this guy goes, uh, For Javel, that is time for us to enter. Will you do the honors? Yes, sir. And the guy who's had genetic modification opens the door to allow you to pass into the garden and then he steps out of the way i go in okay <laughs> i can't right. see anything i know fucking gonna... dark in here <laughs> no it's not it's not actually it's because of the damn uh lighting i'm just gonna take the lighting off so that you guys can see the entirety of the place. And now, Dan, I, I assume that you'll start laughing because you'll immediately recognize this place. Ah, oh, sorry, no laugh. <laughs> you recognize it? Uh-huh. Okay. I think there's uh, water elemental in that pond. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there is, maybe there isn't. So uh, uh, Seven Tide is like, after, after you, my human friends, <laughs> watch out for tigers. <laughs> no, I'll be right there. You're, you're fully armed and armored. Don't worry. If you see a tiger, I assume you know to shoot it. <laughs> you hunt. 
Fair enough. All right, everybody goes in. Yes, we have control of our guys now. You should. Yep. yep. I'll move Jix in. Put him right over here, way far away from you guys, really close to the bushes. <laughs> I love bush. And is he coming in or? Uh, yeah, he's waiting for you. So, Dr. Wagner, I'm going to push you in there as well, or unless you want to move your guy in. Uh, you see him? Yeah, I, I guess I prefer to be pushed so I can always claim that I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> there you go. All right, you're in. And then he will come in behind you. In you go, boys. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Uh, Jix, we should go north. All right. Have any of you ever hunted tigers before? Not uh, genetically modified ones. <laughs> well, my uh, my people have done a great deal of genetic modification, so we probably won't have to wait long uh, for the tigers to attack. We keep them. Uh, uh, I haven't. Uh, so I was. Uh, anticipating your arrival and i wanted to make sure that uh the uh the tigers were well motivated so i haven't uh i haven't provided them any food for the last uh oh i don't know five to seven standard days so uh they will be well motivated to come see us i think jicks can you uh get the hell out of the way so i can come in all right so you see at this point you see uh um Seven times sort of float over uh, over there, uh, and he's looking around, and he's got some sort of, like, big, I mean, it's it's probably twice the size of the guns that you have. Uh, it's obviously fitted for a thing. It's, he's got three, two of his tentacles uh, wrapped around it, and he's got it sort of like, you know, it's on like a pivot, so it's like right up next to his eye, so he's kind of looking around. And you see him sort of looking over this way uh, to the east. Do you guys do anything specific, like test shots or rattle the bushes or step out into the bushes kind of thing? Um, I make sure the safety is, is off. Um, you know, hey, um, question. Is mm. the colonel wearing any armor? Uh, you can't tell. He certainly has sort of like uh, a, a chameleon a chameleon type suit on, which is mimicking. It's kind of confusing because it's mimicking the uh, the ambient foliage. So it's, there's a lot of green sort of overlapping petal looking things on his on his on his coveralls. But certainly his tentacles are free with the gun out. Is uh, um, he's got a he's got a, essentially a mask over his his breathing parts, um, but his eye stalks are 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 uh, are sticking out. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I would probably characterize it as lightly armored at best. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to um, be ready. And I, I, I'm, can I scan the tree? Are, are the trees big enough for 12 foot tigers to climb? Absolutely, they are big enough to climb. Uh, so this room is, uh, we talked about how the size of the rooms in the ship are, are, are enormous. The ceiling here is probably... 60 to 70 feet high uh, and there are trees here that reach three quarters of that so there are several 40 to 50 foot trees in this area um, plus a lot of a lot of underground foliage it would be difficult terrain for you guys to move through places that aren't obviously path or uh, or empty spaces like this here got it um i bet a tiger is gonna jump on us from above that's what i think um i'm gonna just keep looking up I'm gonna make a suggestion here too. Uh, I, well, I'm not a hunter either myself nor my character. I have read about tiger hunts and they usually uh, are beaters out front flushing the, the tigers out so the better shots can take them down. And I would suggest, and I'll even volunteer myself to be one of the maybe people who's out a little front Beater. making noise, making noise to try to uh, flush a tiger so that the better shots can pick them off. Okay. So you, so I just want to make sure I got this correct. You're going to go like away from the rest of the party uh, and make a lot of noise in the in the underbrush to sort of scare the tigers oh, out no, into, no. The, into the field? Not in the underbrush. No, no, no. Nice try, Les. <laughs> I was just, just want to check. I mean, that's what it sounded like. Well, I mean, that's what they do in real tiger hunts. They, they send out a bunch of their dudes out front in a, in a, in a, in a, like a, a searching, searcher's line, you know, a straight line, and they all flush it out into... So the guys on the back of the, within the howdah, on the back of the tiger, on the back of the elephant can 
shoot from a, a fire, you know, a, a, a position that they can clearly see the tiger from a distance. But uh, we don't really have the luxury there. I was just saying that maybe having somebody out front being the sacrificial goat or whatever might be good for everybody else to um, pick off these tigers. I like the way you think, Mr. Jicks. <laughs> Very treacherous. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I volunteer to, to go out front. Uh, hey, try not to shoot me, will you? Did anybody uh, else hear I volunteer as tribute? Yep. <laughs> Take me instead. Kill me. <laughs> Remind me, how do we do uh, perception checks? Uh, it's been so long since we, since we did one. Yeah. I think it's is it intellect or let's see. Uh, strength dex, in education or endurance, intelligence, education, social, body Check here. I don't, have any, I don't have any skills that match. Ability perception. check. Yeah, I think it's an ability check. Uh, Intelligence. I'm looking looking real quick through here. So, I'm yeah, I'm going to just say, uh, everybody Wait. give me an intelligence check. I think it should be intelligence and uh, dex mixed together divided by two. But, okay. Um, um, so, I have an 11. Does that give me a plus two, as I recall? Uh, you get plus one for every number over eight. So an 11 would give you a plus three. Okay. Number of eight. So I get every number over eight? Yep. Got it. All right. So Eight um, is zero, nine is one, ten is two, that kind of thing. Got it. Okay. Let me see. My best skill. Um, nice. 2D6? 2D6. Yes, sir. Jet shot himself in the eye. Nice. Okay. So, um, mm, nice, Dr. Dr. Wagner. Wagner. Yes. Uh, do you want to take a take a peek, see if you see anything? I sure do. Should I open my eyes? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, you rolled a twelve. Okay. So, um, so, uh, so first things first. Uh, Tam, you are pretty sure you saw something roiling the bushes over about here. Can you see that? No. But you don't see any creatures. Yeah, so bring it again. Right here. I am okay. not seeing the ping. I'm not seeing the ping either, Les. Right over here. Get off the GM screen. I'm not. It's happening. No, he's not. Uh, go to the left. Maybe you don't have zoomed out enough. Okay, ping it again. I'm 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 looking over everywhere. Everywhere. Every place I can see the whole screen. I do not see any ping. Well, I'm, I'm able to ping it too, and I'm pinging it. So Let's way to the this. left. Way to the left. Can you hey. see this ping right by me? Okay, I see that ping. Okay, way to the left. Along the path. Oh, way over here. Okay. Oh, now you got it. All right, so you're oh. pretty sure that you saw something moving over there, but you didn't see a tiger. Um, Captain Black, you were like turning around, and you're like, what the hell are you talking about, Tam? Coffin, yeah. you're pretty sure you saw a tiger come out of the bushes uh, and come across the across the thing. Uh, my, uh, I hate this color. This color is the shittiest color ever. Hold you can change colors. I know. Come out of the it came out of the thing and went you know, across through you there. You know how to change colors? I All just right. did. Okay. I'm gonna be right here and I have my gun out and I'm ready to shoot. Okay. Which shoot. gun? Uh the uh laser rifle. Okay. Um, uh and Wagner, you're 13. You see Tam is looking to the left, and you're pretty sure that he's seen oh, something. I rolled but you well. also you also saw that um that uh, uh, Weber and Seven Tide have sort of gone the other way. So they're hunting in the different, they're going right. Yeah, we're splitting the party up. Nice. How are we doing that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I sort of, Seven Tide sort of got a mind of its own. It's his preserve. He's got his gun out, and you can see kind of like pivoting around, and you know, he's looking around. He's like, ha, 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 I love good sport. I'm sure they won't wait long. <laughs> We want to tell them we uh, think we spotted something over here. Yeah. Does Anybody he have neural? Do we communicate to him via neural net less, or we have to talk? 
Uh, but, but I don't know it if you don't say it. So it's kind of well. Hard. No, no. We don't really have neural ace, so I'm not getting anything from you. We don't really have it. Introduce neural. Uh, he kind of, well, no, I mean, he doesn't. So you kind of have to say it. Uh, I mean, you're in touch with the ship and it's allowing you guys to communicate by okay. neural lace, but, um, but he, but the affronters, as far as you know, don't use neural lace. All right. They would find that to be an, an offense against, uh, their personal sovereignty. Um, so do you say anything? Well, who saw the tiger should... It was a dark one. Well, it was Coffin. Thought he did. Oh. Yeah, oh, Coffin, Coffin, Tiger. Coffin, give me another uh, quick intelligence check. Okay. While Coffin's doing that, scroll up uh, farther up the thing. I, I sent uh, Jet and uh, Tam a note, but I didn't get responses. Suddenly, you hear uh, <laughs> you hear uh, Seven Ooh. Tides' booming voice go. Ha <laughs> ha! The game is afoot, and ah. all of a sudden, out of the uh, uh, out of the things come the tigers. <laughs> this one is running flat out down the path towards you. This one just erupts out of the uh, uh, stuff and begins making its way towards Coffin. Let's roll for a niche. Woo. All right, cool. All, all right, right. Cool. remind us how to do that. All right, so according to this your character. It's 2d6 plus your DC bonus. My DC bonus. Oh, the, with the, with the, that's yeah. DR. Dex. Okay. So if I have an eight, my bonus is one, right? Your Dex bonus is minus four, Don? <laughs> is it really? I've checked that. <laughs> okay. And, and eight is neutral less, and then we get. Eight is neutral. Plus. That's what I thought. Yeah, eight is zero, nine is one. 10 is 2 for, from a bonus yes. standpoint. Yes, my dex is minus 4. Jesus. Why? I don't know. Do All right, Dr. What? Wagner, you got a 9. That's pretty good. You're always, you got a you're always fast. Uh, Weber got a gentleman's 8. You are like looking around behind you and you see, you think Seven Tide is looking the other way. Uh, so there you go. Coffin got a 7. Is that right? Seven. Yeah, I did. I, I um I put I, I selected my character and rolled, but my uh, score did, did did not show up. That's all right. Uh, I got you in there. And so who are we missing? Your your score showed up, Coffin. It's a ten. Jet got a ten. Okay. Ah, that's who I'm missing. So let me do uh, let me do uh, seven tide real quick. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Coffin got a 13 and a 10. He rolled twice here. I did? Well, that's what it shows. Oh, you have 2d6 plus 6. Is that your roll? Um, you can't have a plus 6 on Dax. I, uh, no, I actually... Um, no, I'm sorry. You have a 7. You're, if I roll look farther down, you have a 7. That's me. That's the last yeah. 2d6 plus 2. I have a Dex of 10, so that's plus 2, correct? Correct. 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 All right. Guess who won the initiative? Tigers. Gee, the tigers. <laughs> <laughs> the tigers. Uh, so they are going to attack. Uh, hold on just a second. I can't find anything here today. Uh, here we go. I am so, proud. When you see these creatures, you are shocked. You've seen uh, pictures of Terran tigers and stuff like that in uh, in uh, um, you know in video and, and things like that. Your average tiger on Earth uh, is about what about eight feet long. Yeah. Yeah. These are closing in on twelve to fourteen. They're probably eight feet tall at the shoulder. So imagine a double tiger. 
that's what this is. They are also there. Uh, there, you uh, as you as you see these things pouring down out here. It looks like their claws have been enhanced in some sort of metallic resin um, that is grown into their claws. So it's like their claws are made of metal, uh, and their teeth has the same sort of quality as you see their mouths open up. You know that kind of thing. Extra long fangs, uh, and they seem to be metal tipped or somehow infused with metal. A little bit of Wolverine there. Uh, this one is going to come straight at um, straight at Tam, or I'm sorry, Doyle, and try to bite him. Pull your spoon, Mr. Doyle. Fend that tiger off. Seven, that's going to miss. Uh, and then this one is going to one, two, come very fast at you, Captain Black. And he's going to be able to swipe at you with a claw as he comes past Coffin and tries to attack you. Here's his claw attack. Six does not hit. You dodge out of the way, but you hear them roaring. Uh, a uh, uh, You hear Sevatide like, woohoo, and shooting in the air uh, as Weber, uh, a uh, something that you probably don't like have happen happens. You see... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Another one come out of the uh, 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 brush, and it is just sort of walking out very slowly as it kind of like. Uh, clever girl. I look to my left. Um, the uh, It comes out. So it does that. So two misses in that. Seven Tide looks around, and he's like, uh, he looks back to, uh, to the right. He was looking at those guys, and he hears the growling. And he looks around, and he sees the tiger, and he goes, ha, 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 it's all yours, Weber. Take it. And does nothing. Does not shoot. Captain Black. Ah. Wait, what does not shoot? Uh, I don't uh, shoot. Seven Tide doesn't shoot. Oh. Okay. He, he says to you, take take him, Mr. Chicks. All right. Well, when my time comes, I will crap myself. Okay. Captain Black, you're up. Now, you are using a heavy laser rifle, right? Correct. All right. I'll go with him on me. I'm half tempted to use my pipe, my stick. I'll tell you what, if you kill it with your pike, you are your your uh your status with seven tide will go up immeasurably. Huh. I well, want to see the, the freezer weapon. Anyway. Oh, God, I wish I always forget how this how it works. Okay, so it's been a while you know, since we you had have this. pike skill. So basically it's two D six plus your skill in the weapon. If you want to shoot the if you want to shoot the rifle, you use laser rifle skill. So it's only plus your skill, not like in this case plus my strength since it's a hand weapon. Uh, no, it's your skill in this case. The strength doesn't matter. Okay. And then I do 2d6 plus then stun damage? Uh, theoretically, yes. I mean, assuming I hit. Do you right. remember what the stun damage is? Stun damage, I believe, I'll check, but I believe it just renders them uh, immobile for like a round or something like that. Okay. So it's 2d6 plus 4. So an 11. Uh, it deals 2d6, sorry, stun damage in addition to normal damage. A character struck by a stun stick must make an endurance check equal to the, with a negative DM equal to stun damage. Uh, the endurance check fails. The character is knocked unconscious. So uh, in this case, I don't know that that would be the, the same for a tiger, a genetically automated tiger as opposed to a person. All right. So what did you do? 11. You hit it. Did I go above by any amount? Uh, well, you have, so the basic hit is an eight. You have to get an eight. Uh, three over. And it says it, I do 2d6 stun in addition to normal damage. In addition to weapon damage, right. So how much weapon damage does it do? I don't think it does just one, I think. Is it two? I have to get I out thought, my, well, my black book. Well, I, didn't, I wasn't ready. My black books aren't open. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Damn you, <laughs> Captain Black. I need a character sheet for this. I, I made you one. Yeah, but I didn't fill it out. <laughs> All right. All this stuff about the stun stick, I did not put in there. Uh, what was there? Pike. Uh, does. Shit. Where is it? Where are you? Ah, Pike. Uh, two, uh, three, oh, three D. Three dice. Well, this is, but yeah, this would be smaller, so two D. Essentially, it functions as a cudgel. 
I think that's what we agreed to, yes. Yep. All right, so I'll do 2d6 once for the main damage. And then, okay, five points. And there's no strength bonus on this, right? No. Okay, and then the stun damage. Okay. And I got three past his armor, or his, his defense, right? For whatever that matters. I think that... Oh, no, that just, it's just a matter of, of to hit. Yeah, for the stun check. So you... you pretty sure that you delivered a significant stun to this creature it is not unconscious um and uh it does seem like it's zapped a little bit and now it's just like really angry which is hard so to tell with the tiger that again is that what you're saying <laughs> well i mean you certainly can but that, i mean <laughs> seven times like ha, 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 captain captain black bold move i salute you finish it off you don't look like you've done a ton of damage to this guy with this with your yeah i noticed arm. That yeah but that's your attack dr uh, wagner you. dr wagner you're up now you have hung back you see you can hear well i don't think anybody except for seven tide nobody's shot anything all you hear but wagner you can definitely hear tigers growling so uh, do i sense any level of sentience from these tigers you haven't seen them yet. All you can do is hear them like growling and and and. Uh, it, I don't you know, really have to look at them. I can hear them. Just a skill uh, you have. Give, uh, give me an give me an intelligence check. They're trying Maybe. to eat you right now. Okay. You never know. Um, let's see. Could be a natural twelve though. Uh, that's pretty high at thirteen. Well, so um, they sound like regular tigers. Um, they're not but you don't get the from what you can hear you don't get the impression that they're speaking any sort of language they're just growling and 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 uh and uh, screeching so uh to you it sounds like the uh attack vocalizations of an animal it doesn't sound like a sentient creature all right i don't discern any level of dialect on their growls no. like no nothing like that one's from serengeti one's from <laughs> Yeah, one's from Britain, so it's very posh, uh, right. growling. You know, no, uh, I mean, you, you, you. These sound like regular animal growls, although loud and and frightening. All right. Well, now that I can see one or two of them. Yeah, one one's attention. right behind cough, and the other one's. Uh, you looks like Captain Black just just bounced his uh his like his uh um what do they call it when you have a fake appendage. Cybernetic, uh, your, uh, your pros pros prosthesis. A prosthesis, yeah. He just whacked him with a pro with his prosthetic arm uh, oh that he extended out. So uh, interesting. Wait, Captain Black has a prosthetic arm. Well, kind of. He has like an. Ex it's, it kind of extends out. Dan, yeah, you can explain that better than I do. Like a go-go yeah. gadget arm? Yeah, you would have known he's had a ro he doesn't hide it. He's got a robotic arm, one of his arms. Oh, is it like a go-go gadget arm? Do -do 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 -do. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's a got a shoehorn on it. <laughs> it's, it's got, got the uh, hands. Remember remember in uh was it top secret the the, the anal intruder fist? Uh... <laughs> yeah, he's he's got a shoehorn hand, you know, for emergencies. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so uh, Wagner, you gonna so you moved up. Are you gonna do anything else there, or are you just gonna hang back and see when Captain Black gets eaten, and then you'll be able to patch him up, maybe? Uh, well, don't I have a freeze gun? You do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that little tiger who's uh, harming Captain Black a little love tap. Okay, uh, so Captain Black is in front of it, between you and it, so you're I'm gonna a good have shot. All right, but you're gonna have minus two on this shot. Why? Well, because you have to try and shoot around. Do you, do you have rifle skill? Yeah. Do you? I do. Well, yeah, carbine. Uh, all right, make it just minus one because you're not familiar with this gun. But um, yeah, okay. If you got skill, you got skill. Okay. So let's see here. Two minus one. Uh, that's all a right. miss. <laughs> so wait, what's your carbine skill? How many points? Uh, plus one. Plus one. All right, so six. It's still a miss, uh, but uh, <laughs> but you didn't hit Captain Black, which was good. So it sort of just shoots off <laughs> into the distance. Um, so yeah, uh, Captain Black, you feel this pressure wave of something that feels intensely cold sort of go past you on the right, and it sort of splits the defense, kind of goes through here. Let's see. Do I have a 
a cold beam. I, I might. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes like through here. And uh, and shoots in. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yeah. All right. So it kind of shoots through there, misses you, uh, but you can feel the pressure wave, and it sort of peters out. Uh, what's what's the range? You have a thirty foot range, a thirty meter range. So yeah, it goes past you and sort of blasts into these bushes. Um, coffin. It goes past you, past you in front of you, and blasts into the bushes over here, okay. where it where it uh, hyper freezes like a bunch of twigs and shit, and it breaks off the off of the thing. So there's a bunch like a big rain of of uh, leaves and sticks and stuff fall out of the bush because it's because uh, it's frozen. Got it. Okay. 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 Weber Jicks, this thing is just stalking you. It's moving forward very slowly. Ah. Well, let me ask Get you. Get him, Weber. <laughs> He's yours, my man. Human. A real quick, Les. I, 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 for real, a sniper rifle isn't. Would it be. I guess it would be effective at this difference, but. Sure. But that, it's still a rifle. Yeah, okay. All right. I, I, uh, I attempt to uh, pop Tony the Tiger here. Okay. Uh, so I, what about. I have, you have no, any rifle skill? No, I have. I am an expert body pistoler, pistolier. Okay. I don't have any rifle skill. So All right, so you be... don't get any bonus. All right, so if I survive this encounter, do I get a bonus after that for future rifles? Uh, like Maybe. I'm, I'm a bit of an expert. All right. Um, <laughs> I so... to, you'll be able to tell when you get back to civilization. You'll be like, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've hunted tigers with the affront. How badass am I? All right. I will uh, try to turn this into a a lovely um hallway rug okay miss right. fleshette you're surprised so the fleshette goes off of the thing this thing doesn't even flinch as you fire at it and the the, <laughs> the, the fleshette goes flying off into the bushes behind it you can hear it uh eventually ting off of uh what sounds like a metal wall good kitty i think i got a biscuit for you <laughs> do you want to move it all maybe run behind him or charge the creature maybe um, hit it I am going to go back to back with uh, my giant jellyfish friend here. Like, uh, take him. Uh, what's his Colonel? You feel a tentacle kind of like swoop around you. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll move right up to him and I'll and I'll pull my uh, my sawed off shotgun. Take him, turtle. Stay, stay out of the way, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, and I'll you feel that you. big gun sort of like pivot around. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's it for Weber. Coffin Doyle. All right, so you have the one guy in front of you, and so you were facing, uh, you were facing uh, to the left. You were sort of facing this way when all of this kind of shit happened. And then the thing jumped out behind you, and you look around, and you see a tiger is right there. Uh, and then you look around, and you see that this tiger was running down the path and eventually came to a uh, stop in front of uh, Captain Black. So you can pivot and fire in a couple of different directions, but you're not going to be able to fire at both of those guys. Whoops, sorry about that. I'm going to fire at the tiger directly to the north of me. Okay, yeah. so you're going to pivot and shoot north. Okay. Yeah, this is called self-rescue. You always self-rescue before you help uh, provide aid for others. And Coffin, <laughs> you have a uh, you have the laser light machine gun. So you have it on a big, it's on a big strap. You're kind of like, uh, you know, like the, the light machine gun users and aliens kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that would be Drake and Vasquez. Drake and Vasquez. Cool. All right. I'm so uh, Hux, Hicks, Hudson, Apone, Frost, <laughs> Wisvowski. Dietrich, I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> Man, you know a lot about aliens. Oh, I know it all, baby. You know, Aliens is one of my wife's favorite movies. Really? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Marla's stock went up quite a bit right now. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, all right, so uh, you're firing. So you get. So if you just open up, you get four shots. Okay. Um, now, do you have rifle skill? You have carbine skill. Hear me out. I have a gun combat three. Ooh, okay. That and, works. Um, this is a does, gun. Does my uh, strength or de dexterity matter? Nope. You whip it around. Gun combat three matters, though. So you get plus three on all of those shots. Plus three. And so um, I roll 2d6 plus three to hit. Uh, yep. All right. Sh should I roll four times? or Four times. Um, four yeah, times. four shots. Yeah. You're just blasting away. I'm assuming you're rocking and rolling on full auto. That's me. Yes. Here we go. So here, here's one. Here's two. Okay. 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 You lay. Oh, that's a good one. So you just. Keep, so it, yeah. There's a little bit. The first couple of shots you run, then you get the feel of this gun, and you're just like boom, 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 boom. All four of those go into the tiger. So you roll a total of twenty d six plus twelve. Okay. Twenty 
20 D, uh, let me just uh, type that in here. 20 D6 yeah, right. plus 12. Yep. Cut, all right, uh, here, here we go. I'm going to roll um, 82. All right, it goes down. <laughs> so you basically, you're like, ah! And you pull that thing around and you're like, and you cut that thing into smoking hunks of tiger. It just drops into pieces as the lasers fly back there. All right. Boom. Okay. All right, excellent. You could still, you still have, I don't know if you can move after that. Uh, I guess you could move a little bit if you wanted to move somewhere. I'm going to, um, you know what? I'm going to move back into here right there. And can I pivot and get ready to shoot the tiger that's um, attacking my captain? Sure, right. sure. Captain Black, it looks like Coffin has just killed a tiger, and now he's pointing that uh, that light laser machine gun at you. <laughs> not, not, not it. Shot that from every angle. <laughs> at the tiger. At, at, at the tiger. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mehmet. I, so I'm, I'm surprised you're not playing Eye of the Tiger right now. <laughs> Don't encourage him. <laughs> uh, the jellyfish and I are playing careless whispers over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that loving tentacle wrapped around me. Here's what, here's what I really should be playing. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah, we really should have like uh, what's the name from Predator? We just lay the waste of the forest, so they cut away all this greenery over here with a minigun. With the minigun, yeah, it was uh, the guy who eventually became governor of Minnesota. Yeah, I Jesse, can't Ventura, Ventura. Jesse, Jesse Ventura. Ventura. Jesse Ventura. Jesse the body. I can't think of his name in that movie though. Man, I uh, lose my touch. Uh, Mehmet, what are you doing? Are you firing? Which tiger? You're muted, by the way. No, no, you're not. Or maybe you are. I don't know. I can't tell if you're muted or not. I'm not muted. Okay. Which tire are you shooting at? Uh, the one in front of Captain Black? Okay. So 10 will hit. Uh, so you are you are using... Uh, oh, a Magrel rifle. Okay. So this one shoots a... Uh, it's It shoots an ovoid, like a disc. Uh, so that is a hit. You, you nail it. Um, it does 4d3 plus 3 damage. And so, on the heels of that uh, of that cold bomb that went past your ear, uh, you hear a whizzing <laughs> sound, and something slams into the tiger. Four D three plus three. Yep. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he does four D three plus three damage. Have another gin and tonic, Don. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. That work? Uh, 43. So 12 points. Okay, so the disc slams into this thing, and uh, it takes 12 points of damage. And it does look wounded. It starts to blood. It, it lets out a snarl, and it looking, it's looking past you, Captain Black, but it's still right there looking to eat you. Uh, you're not sure that it's going to go past you to try and get it at Tam. Uh, okay, that's the end of round one. Pretty good round. Uh, Coffin is uh, feeling his oats over there. He's just chopping them into chopping tigers into smoking bits with that light machine gun. Uh, work, Coffin. But it's the tiger's turn. Uh, and the tiger, so the first, the tiger on uh, Captain Black is going to do uh, essentially a full attack. Where's my tiger sheet? Hold on a second. Now I see the jellyfish moves. Does the colonel moves at the same time? Seven tide. Does he? Does he get an attack of opportunity if they move close to him? I'm asking for personal preservation reasons. Well, the tiger is sort of sort of moving slowly towards you. Uh, seven tide. You are feeling seven tide's tentacles push you towards the tiger. Uh, he's like, oh, my human friend, get out of the way! I can't bring my gun to bear. Okay, Dude, yeah. but, but you can go ahead and take this one. Go ahead and shoot, Weber. <laughs> shoot again. I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, attacks. Uh, all right. So two claws and a bite. And if it gets both claws, it gets rake damage, which means it just starts taking you out. So first the bite I'm going to do. Ugh, that's a miss. But now the claws, which it's better at. It loves to claw. It's meat. First claw. Second claw. Well, one claw hits. Uh, and that does. Hold on a second. 
It does 2d of damage. So you take six points as a these big metallic claws sort of rake across you. Now you have armor on, which is DR17. So the claws just rake across the uh, uh, the, the front of your armor. Ooh, you got lucky there. Seven okay. Tide pushes you forward a square and says, get in there, boy. I know you'll hit it with this shot. <laughs> but that's all he does. Captain Black, what do you do? I, I'm going to try shooting since obviously... Uh... Seven Tide's taking a, taking a teach a man to fish uh, strategy with Weber. <laughs> He feels uh, a paternal instinct toward you. He wants you to succeed. Yeah. So what is that now? That's the laser rifle. Laser rifle. Boom. That's a hit. You back up a little bit and, and sort of like boom and let off a shot. And that was 66? 66 damage. That thing goes off blindingly. 28 points. The laser hits him in the shoulder and you hear like, ah! He doesn't yell out like that, but however a tiger would yell out in pain, I don't have no idea how that would sound. Uh, but yeah, you bl it blast him. He's still up and uh, and, and grievously injured, but uh, he's still up. Dr. Wagner. Agent Dr. Wagner. Well, let's see. Um, I want to see a tiger sickle. Hmm. You take that right. shot? Yeah, okay, sure. Okay. So you said you have um, uh, carbine skill, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, what's the number on that? How many? With how many bonus? Plus points? one. Plus one. All right. So your shot now that now that black is sort of out of the way, you you have a clear shot. Uh, in fact, if you would move like one square north, that would be more perfect. <laughs> one more close to tiger, and then put your head inside. One right. Well, if you Open shoot well, if you had, well now you're well now you may want to not want to do that because now you're in front of Mehmet. Uh, but you said move one square north. Yeah, but you can't listen to me. I don't have your best interest at heart. Oh, that's right. You are the DM. That's true. Uh, but you wouldn't get any penalty here. You could stay here. You're sort of sh shooting over uh, the captain's shoulder, I guess, or around the captain. Okay. Bloop. No. That's a, that is a hit. So what does this do? It's a cryo rifle. Let's see. I lost it. I can't find it anywhere. Uh, it's not a mag rail. I sit down here. Hold on a second. It's not a spear gun. It's not a laser. Where is it? Cryo rifle. Here we go. Uh, it does 4D of cold damage, and I have to make a strength check or, or be held in place from the freezing cold. But yeah, you hit it, and it's like bloop, and this, this wad of super chilled air or whatever, so, some sort of super chilled gases crashes right into the midships of the, of, the, of the tiger, and you can see it sort of bloom outward across the tiger, and everything is all frosted up, and uh, you can see it sort of like cringing away. Go ahead and roll the 4D6 of damage. This may be six. Okay. It almost feels like just a, an exercise, really. I hope. An exercise in pain. 13 points of damage. It had 12 left. You killed it. Why isn't it just frozen? It well, it, well, it's well, the, the the chill stopped its heart. Uh so it was and it was so already. So I injured. can still they perform a vivisection. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so uh, it had 12 hit points left uh, out of a total of 68. Uh, is that, that's, I don't think this counts for a verm because it wasn't lower than 10 and 10% <laughs> would have been six. So yeah, it had to be lower than 10. Uh, so no verm uh, under the new verm guys rules, but close, very close. Excellent work, Dr. Wagner. Do you want to move? Oh, you already did move, didn't you? Yes. Okay. All right. Weber Jix, you were getting a lot of encouragement from Seven Tide to shoot that guy. Okay. All right. I'm uh, I'm going to do something. As I, I mentioned last round, I, I backed up, dropped the rifle, and pulled the shotgun. So now I'm going to do something that the tiger did not expect. I'm going to charge the tiger, <laughs> shoot it at point blank rage like a man. Okay. Or a All right. Okay. So you run towards the tiger. Yeah. Let me uh, get my. Uh, uh, whatever I feel is the ideal shot for a Sada, which I feel will be about there. Yep, um, that's about right. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it have it. 
These are two meter squares. So yeah, you're uh, like five meters away from it. And I'm going to be screaming my battle cry the whole time. My <laughs> well, war. Give us your war, war face. face. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't believe it. <laughs> I hate tigers. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you, uh, have any, you don't have any shotgun skills, so you're at zero up, right? Uh, well, I'd like to point out that I have carried a shotgun and fired it twice in service of uh, other things, but I do not have any official okay. uh, shotgun skills. I have killed many things with a body pistol, but all right. 46 or no, yeah, 46 damage if I hit the sucker. Okay, so let me just roll first. All right. Ah! Boom! You fire off that shotgun point blank rage. It goes right into the face of the tiger. So yeah, you hit it. All right, just straight forty-six. Straight uh sawed off shotgun, four D six, yeah. Eighteen points of damage. It is covered with pellets. Uh okay, here we go. It is covered with pellets, and you see it blood pouring out of its uh, mouth and nose. It's like, and it's charging you next time. Why didn't it yeah. charge you this time? I forgot. Um, yeah, it was, it was sort stalking, of stalking me. Yeah. Coffin. I figured it was trying to pull me out, so another tiger would pull me down from the side, but so far that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened yet. Coffin, what do you do? Okay. Um, can I hear um, my blood curdling scream? Comrade, uh, <laughs> well, you hear screaming. certainly hear screaming and a shotgun go off. I mean, it's loud down the down uh, the way. Okay, I'm gonna um, run toward the sound of the um, gunfire. Okay. So, how far can I get here? So these are two meter squares. I think you can travel. Uh, I think it's um, it's like twelve meters around. So six squares. Okay, so okay, yeah, and I go but, one. But you're in you're in metal armor, so that's reduced. That's reduced to four squares. One, two, um, three, and four. I okay. can't really get to them. Um, uh, you can get behind seven tide, but the problem is seven tide's big. He's blocking the way, and you see him just sort of looking at it. He's got that gun pivoted over there, but he hasn't shot. Can I get that <clears throat> far? You can get that far, but I don't think you can get a shot off. Not until you get in front of seven tide. All right, uh, then I'm going to um, pass my turn, but um, my aim is to um, uh, pass by Sabotai and uh, um, run up and assist Jix. Okay, sounds good. Memetam. Okay. So you don't have a target right now. If you flip around, you hear shotgun bombs go uh, shotgun blast going off behind you so you whirl around and you can sort of see what looks to be weapon chicks on the other side of seven tide uh f shooting off a shotgun and you can see the tiger but there's no way you can get a clear shot not with seven tide there i can i can move to here as one action okay and fire once okay and that's the mag rail gun right yeah okay that's a miss barely but a miss your bullet goes off your your uh your goss bullet goes off into the brush okay all I'm right done. tiger time thanks for trying it charges you and jumps and tries to jump on you uh and attacks uh, let's see how good this tiger does. So it's just going to try two claws and a bite. Uh, we'll do the bite first. Ooh, gotcha. All right. All right. So that's 2d6. Eight points. On, are you wearing armor or no? Did you yeah, opt up? The DR17 armor. Okay. So let's total up first. So, uh, and then the, uh, the claw attacks. First one. Ooh, a hit. Second one. Ooh, Ouch. another hit. So, so you take another... That would 2D6 be six per claw. 15 points of damage plus the original eight is 23. Uh, minus 17. Eight, minus 17 is six points of damage as the Ow. tiger is on, on you and is like clawing away your armor. I, I will mark that down. I have 21 hit points. So Ooh, now and he also, six. oh, he gets rake too. So he got both claws on you. So he gets an, another 2d6 rake damage as he's tearing uh, at no, you. He doesn't want that. Uh, four points. So another four oh, points as he's points. just like he's just ripping across your uh, uh, your uh, your armor, and uh, you can feel that you're probably bleeding. 
I hope my credit's still good with uh, Dr. Wagner. <laughs> Medic. <laughs> All right. Did you take your hit points off? Yeah, I have 11 left. I uh, can't tell. No, I, oh, I'm sorry. I took it off my character sheet. I forgot I can do it here. One moment. Oh, here it shows I have 33, but I have my thing. I show I have 21. Do we know how many hit points we're supposed to have? I, yeah, it's your, uh, um, it's strength con and endurance totaled. What so con? yeah, 33 would be a, a oh, endurance. Yeah, yeah. strength and endurance, right? Strength, endurance. And what was the other one? <clears throat> Dex. Oh, so those are 21. Yeah. 21. So okay. Is, yeah. So I'm just, so this is wrong. wrong. Let me, let me fix that. Okay. I'll uh, fix so it. you're down to 11. Yep. All right. There you go. Thank you. Mehmet, this tiger's looking at it like he wants to eat Weber. Well, he's, he's making a good try of it right now. And now it's seven tied. <laughs> this, this is good sport. Weber, shoot him. Go on, shoot him. Kid, your shot. I don't want to take it away. Take away the shot. Well, I'm, I'm busy screaming and trying I not think, to be eaten. I think he's trying to be a good host yeah. uh, and allow you guys to do the kill. So, Captain Black. So, I missed the step about movement because I've got too much in the way, right? Uh, you yeah, so you can move. Uh, I think what we say, uh, four squares with armor. Uh, so four squares per round. You can move twice that. So eight squares total. And then I'd be stuck in his square. Yeah, you can't do that. So I'm stopping there. Okay. And I still got too much in the way to shoot, right? Uh, yeah, you can't shoot through his square. Yeah. He would okay, probably good. take that personally. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Wagner. You got the first one. Maybe there's two tigers to your credit here coming up. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I need to get over to Weber Jix and put on a some sort of sticky bandage. <laughs> it's a little super glue. Something. I'm not sure how far I can travel. You are. Are you wearing uh, that uh, that armor? Did you sure put on Okay. So four four squares per round. Uh, so a total of eight. Up to okay. eight squares. So, one, two, so three, can I ask four, this? Five, six, our, all right. There we go. Yeah, I think, yeah, there's eight. So you get right up next to Mem Mehmet. You come up at the other side. Uh, but I think you're, you're still too far away to give him a bandage. But you see the tiger's like on top of him, right? You're just like clawing at him. Well, ah. I can offer encouragement. And I think you get healing points for that. Uh, it'd have to be some pretty good encouragement. Oh, it is. It's come on, Weber. I know you can do it. We all know you can do it. You're the man. Go. I got to tell you, Weber, you're getting a lot of encouragement. Seven Tide wants you to succeed. Uh, Dr. Wagner is encouraging you. I mean, everybody's pulling for you, buddy. <laughs> this, is a, this thing has four times as many hit points than I have, and I'm half dead. Do you have armor on? Well, that's why I'm only still alive. I'd be you have long a, you dead. You have a sawed-off shotgun in your hand. Come on, yeah. you've got the edge here, and it's your turn. All right. Well, it's uh, no, I'm going to. DM. I'm going to jam this. Uh, I'm going to call for assistance. Call for aid. Gondor calls for aid, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to jam the shotgun in the tiger's mouth and and say, "Bad kitty." Okay. Uh, even in, even at while well, I'm being terrified, I still have a gift of gab and wit. So. That's a hit. All right. Another shotgun blast to the face. Ooh. 16 points. You take off a portion of its skull, big piece of ear. One ear is completely missing, uh, but it uh, uh, several of its teeth have been shot out, uh, and one eye seems to be pretty messed up, but it is still fighting. I saved some for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it gets interesting. Coffin Doyle. All right. Um, can I get around this um, giant floating yeah. guy here? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna. Get, can I um, push through to here? Uh, sure. Can I push through to here? Uh, yes, but you will only have one shot of your gun. How about here? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one more back. There you go. I'm trying to not shoot Weber Jix. All right. So that's going to be a minus one uh, because you've got gun skill. It's going to be minus one on your shot. So you don't get all, all the bonus. But uh, all right. So uh, um, are you going to rock and roll or are you going to go to go to semi auto? I'm going to rock and roll. Um, all right. But um, with the minus one. Yep. 
So, but you've got um, you've got gun combat three, so it only it reduces it to two essentially. All right. So I roll of. I am sorry. Uh, remind two D, me. Two D six plus two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I roll that four times. Correct. That's correct. Here it comes. Here's the first shot. I miss. Here's the second shot. It. It. Uh, got him it, and it. Got him. Uh, three hits out of four uh and it does how many points of damage per shot i forget um, per shot, like six, six it's gonna be, uh, um five dice plus three five five d6 plus three so you've got 15 d3 plus nine nine 15, gotcha hold on to 15 d d6 or i'm sorry 15, yeah d6 15 d6 plus nine mm-hmm. hold on I'll be right there, and I do 71. Boom! <laughs> Smoking Hulk. Uh, you, you cut it to pieces. Right after the shotgun blast, Weber, you're thrown a little bit, a couple of steps backward by the by the shotgun blast, but then all of a sudden, <laughs> bunch of gleams of light come shooting out of uh, out of the light machine gun, and it just cuts this thing to ribbons and just into pieces, and it drops to the ground in front of you. I <laughs> like this gun. That was good shooting, Mr. Doyle. Excellent work. Uh, <laughs> I see I that you are enjoying my. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps this particular weapon suit. I was, uh, I was very good about choosing a weapon for you. So he sort I love of. It. So we drop out of combat because all three of the tigers have been killed, and he he goes over here and you see him sort of. Uh, he reaches down uh, with one of his tentacles and it wraps around one of the metal teeth. These teeth are probably six inches long, and it just sort of rips it out of the jaw and he floats over to the one over here the first one that came out of the woods and he does the same thing (laughs) rips it out and then he's like flows past you guys comes over here and rips another one out and he says well it's another tradition amongst the uh can you guys hear me yep yeah it's another it's another i'm not my my video's not moving uh it's another tradition amongst my people that uh you your first your first kills you get the trophies from so here and he hands two of the teeth to mr doyle and another one he reaches a tentacle over and hands it to dr wagner (laughs) are you having fun so far he's like uh you okay that Weber? yeah look a little having uh, a blast this is great. Uh, I'm a little, uh, I think this suit is holding my innards in, so I should probably. Uh, ah, I assume that you thing. want to talk to your friend, Miss Dr. Wagner, don't you? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Well, the only thing I brought medicinal was a little uh, flask of scotch on my hip that I'm now imbibing in a little bit to, to keep the pain bang. <laughs> Doctor, could you. Mr. Uh, Jinx, is that an inebriant? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I too enjoy inebriates. I knew that we were cut from the same cloth, Mr. Jicks. Though you be a small human, I think that you and I see eye to eye stalk on many great many things. <laughs> I would love to imbibe some inebriates with you at a uh, post uh, post hunt here. Obviously, so. your physiology would preclude you from drinking, uh, imbibing the inebriates that me and my, my my people enjoy. But certainly, we can enjoy our own inebriants that are suitable for our physiology together. <laughs> that would be indeed pleasurable. Mm-hmm. Now then, there are many more tigers in this forest. Shall we seek them out? Indeed oh, we shall. Yeah, when you said we dropped our conda, I was like, oh, I guess we lived and we can go home now, but apparently <laughs> not. Um, doctor, please patch me up. <laughs> Doc, what do you do? You do, <laughs> do, do a quick, do. you to pull out your med kit and do a quick med check on them. Bring yeah. them back. Some. Yeah. I'm All right. So for every uh, for every uh, you do a medical check for every uh, uh, thing above for every two points above eight that you get, you can give him a dice back of healing. Basically, you're filling him full of what did we call it? Dr. Wagner's happy juice. Collagen. 14. 14. So. Botox. Uh, two, eight, six. So three D six back. So uh, Wagner pulls out an enormous uh, uh, hypo and just jams it into your uh, into your neck and uh, fills you full of uh, Doctor Wagner's special happy juice. So three D six. Three D six back. I roll three D six. Now these are obviously temporary hit points. You will need proper medical attention at some sure. point. But do, do I roll three D six? I think he rolls those. Yeah, I think so. Who, me? Yep, yes, 3d6, yes. please. Okay. Right. Temporary hit points, check. I will retrieve my, my sniper rifle while he's doing this. 16. Uh, oh. 16 oh, well, points I'm back, back. I'm back. I'm maxed out. Oh, I'll, you feel I'll better. He's got, 
So you got he's got you all stitched up. The claw marks are there. Your uh, your armor, however, is a bit debilitated and it is now dropped to DR thirteen from DR seventeen. Okay. So it's not as good. That. Let's write that down right now. DR thirteen. Thank you. So Tam, you have two of these tiger fangs, and you feel them when you feel them in your hand. They're really heavy, uh, much heavier uh, than you would imagine a a tiger fang of this, uh, a tooth of this size would be, which just goes to show you think that it is some sort of genetic confusion. There is some sort of metal in it. Uh, the claws too. Same with you, Wagner. You've got that, that uh, tiger thing and there's still like a little bit of tissue on it. And uh, you, know, you just sort of like ripped it out of the creature's jaw and handed it to you. So it's still got a little goo on it. Can I do a little field test on the DNA on the fleshy you can take samples. I don't know that you can get an analysis real quick. Well, can I talk to Jen and go, dude, sure. dude, beam this up. Let me know what's what's what this is about. All right, so you're gonna do a quick DNA analysis, take a sample, and then uh, use through through you send the data through um, through Neuralace to Jen for analysis. Yeah. Got it. All right, makes sense. Cool. Uh, how fast do you want? Uh, do you want to? He, he uh, so you hear Jin. He Jin says, "Do you want me to send you back what I find? Are you looking for anything specific? One, and do you want me to send you back information uh, before you come back to the ship, or do you want me to just hold it until you get back?" Uh, send it to me as soon as you get it. I'm just right now looking for a general analysis, genus, species, um, gene manipulation, any kind of telltale signs like that. Okay. I'll get back to you ASAP. All right. Uh, all right. So in that case, so uh, um, Seven Tide kind of comes over here to the edge of the woods. He's like, all right, like I said before, there are more, there are certainly more tigers in the forest. Uh, let's, let's get them. Uh, perhaps maybe we should, uh, perhaps you will find it amusing if we would uh, uh, put, put out a lure. A lure? Like, 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 um, like who? Uh, oh, not who, <laughs> one of the creatures, one of the creatures that uh, we have on board ship that the tigers find amusing. Uh, then what we could do is we could take up positions around the lure. And when a tiger materializes to uh, investigate the lure, we can uh, we can attack it from range. <laughs> you could try out some of the range on these on these uh, weapons. <laughs> hmm. uh, I, I'm kind of enjoying the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, man to tiger combat myself but um i uh you know uh but i'll try one ranged shot sure <laughs> all right we will uh, we'll do a lure next follow me and he sort of goes up this path and begins moving deeper into the forest you guys follow him follow me and it's uh, humans i mean humans <laughs> it's only teasing of course. Along, everyone don't be shy Okay. All right. So basically, he is heading towards the Black. center of the uh, of the uh, of the of the garden, essentially, uh, and moving into there. So uh, basically, he will tell you as you move up there that there's a uh, there's a uh, a uh, a basin with uh, <laughs> with with a very a very corrosive substance in it that uh, <laughs> you know obviously we we would never deal with on a on a proper planet like my own, but apparently is uh, quite common in Earth, uh, a, a, a molecular combination of hydrogen and oxygen that forms a, a, a corrosive liquid. Um, but uh, apparently these tigers enjoy it and, and will imbibe it periodically, which <laughs> seems quite odd. But what we've done is we've set the lure up. So as you could see, um, what I can do is when uh, uh, when I uh, when I inform the ship to uh, uh, to uh, set the lure, it will materialize in the middle of this uh, of this basin. Uh, and uh, historically, the tigers it will begin it will begin setting up a, a tremendous noise, uh, and the tigers will come to investigate. Uh, I urge you to take up strategic positions around this clearing, around this little area uh, from where the lure will materialize, so that you may get excellent shots at the tigers when they uh, when they come out of the bush <laughs> we're all up in a circle now yep all right um what's this water is this just like water water it is yeah it's water uh well the center part is this a fountain uh how high is this fountain 
it's it's the fountain is only probably about a meter and a half, two meters high, and it's just like squirting water into the thing. Uh, basically, seven, I... seven Tide will say that this is what uh, uh, Mister Gross informs me is a is a popular uh, uh, a popular sort of corrosive liquid dispensing device on your uh, in your systems. <laughs> it I'm makes sorry, no can... sense to me, but uh, corrosive I... liquid. Yeah, water. Water is cr- extremely corrosive. All right. That's a, um, is it? It's got to, oxygen in it. Is it possible to stand on top of uh, the middle of the fountain? Well, that's where the lure is going to come out. Oh, okay. I was going to say that that'd be a perfect place for a sniper to set up. Um, well, I reloaded my weapon, by the way. I suggest we all say that we did that. Okay. Um, Is everybody keeping uh, track of the shots? A lot of you have pretty substantive magazines, but if you uh, if you let rip, uh, special especially you, Mister Mister Doyle. Gotcha. Um, oh, how, how, go ahead. I'm sorry. Done eight shots so far. Okay. Well, how big's your magazine? Hundred. Oh, nice. Okay. So you got how, 20, twenty-five more rounds. How, is this like a standard fountain, or how high is this lip? Can I stand in the water? The lip's only about a me, uh, you know, like two feet high. You could you could get in the water if you want, but again, uh, he's like, <laughs> Mister Jicks, I admire your boldness, but the lure will come out right in the middle there, and it will attempt to it will uh, create a, it will make a great deal of, of noise splashing about in the corrosive liquid. Uh, you probably do not want to stand in there because this will be the area where the tigers will be focusing on. Uh, I, I was just looking for a place to. Um, I, Standing next to Seven Tide didn't really keep me safe, but uh, I'll stand well, next perhaps, to. Perhaps, perhaps somewhere around the perimeter where you can get a uh, where you can get a clear shot. Yeah, I just want to get surprised from behind and eaten. So we should probably maybe well, pair. <laughs> that, is, that is one of the perils of tiger hunting, my good man. Can I uh, <laughs> can I recommend? Uh, uh, Jix is going to recommend that we maybe pair up here. Um, who's who's still back there? Is that is that uh, Don in the back? Is that Tam in the back? Uh, uh, I don't know. We may have lost him. He passed out from uh, from gin. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a distinct possibility. Let me pin him and like, oh look at that. Moment. I don't think I'm the last person to fall asleep on camera, so I'm I'm okay with this. <laughs> he, he, he'd, oh, been, he'd been uh, he'd been gaming for twelve straight hours or so. So yeah, it's true. <laughs> do you want to do that? We're, we're near the end of it anyway, but. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, we as as we just said, we have now strapped Tam to the lure, um, and okay. are using him as uh, holding as bait. his head under the water. No, no, using him as bait uh, for the tigers. Uh, I don't know what you want to do with him. You want to autopilot him or just? Uh, I'll yeah, I'll take him up there. Okay, so maybe uh, either Doctor or Doctor or a Captain Black or or Doyle. I think we should pair up and, and stand next to each other or near each other so that we can support each other if a tiger happens to spring out behind one of us. Sure. Okay. Okay. Good idea. Uh, since you saved my bacon, I've got a couple of bacon. Of I'm going to stand right there next to you. Okay. okay good. All right. Great. Great. Okay. I got my sniper rifle out and I've reloaded my shotgun. Okay. Much good it did me. <laughs> but I did. I give it, I give it a good, good what for. Everyone in the position they wish to be in. I see you've selected some excellent spots. <laughs> uh, Dr. Widener, are you happy where you are? Um, you got the freeze ray. You might want to move up to. Yeah. Maybe by, by Captain Black. I just need to be hiding behind somebody much bigger and stronger than me. So. Well, I, I highly recommend not recommending standing next to the jellyfish because he'll just push you towards the tiger, as I learned. Uh, I'll, I'll hide here by Captain Black. I think that's a great idea. Okay. All right. Is, so every, is everyone ready? <laughs> All right. So he's, he's like, uh, so you see him pause for a minute, and then the fountain stops and then sort of like sinks below the surface, and then another platform comes up, and on it is a very odd-looking creature that materializes. And it immediately begins bleeding, and uh, not bleeding, bleating, like a, uh, like a goat or a sheep. It's a Judas uh, goat. It looks yeah. kind of like this. Did that, that didn't work. Of course, it didn't work. work. There we go. So it's uh, a weird-looking little creature, but uh, it's what uh, the hell? It looks like an alien. Is that? Okay. It, but it is making a tremendous amount of noise. So it comes up it there. Is. It looks like it's already wounded, um, and it's this sort is of not the spider thing they had earlier, right? No, no, this is different. 
It looks like an alien. It Ooh. does kind of look like an alien, uh, but it's not. Uh, it's 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 some other sort of creature, uh, and you can see that it's already injured. Like sev- uh, like part of its leg is damaged, and uh, you know one of its appendages has been torn off or broken off or something like that. So it's making a tremendous amount of noise, which you can only assume is some sort of pain that it there and then it sort of like falls off sideways into the water and begins splashing around making a ton of noise and and doing other and uh you hear seven tiger <laughs> leans over to catch him like ha he's performing excellently i'm certain that tigers will 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 come to this <laughs> hey. sure enough things begin to move in the underbrush only a few seconds later hmm. over in this area over here hmm. and then again over in this area over here did anybody see those? I didn't see a single thing. I'm just uh, oh, it's not about uh, hit it again, hit it again. Like like over here? Yeah, yeah saw I saw that one. And then over here. Got it. Is that damn no. green color? <laughs> I know it's the same exact color. It's stupid. Uh and then as you guys are watching, you see two tigers show up. Wow. All right. And one of them is sort of like coming through here and it's got his eyes peeled on the, uh, the, both of them are staring. This one kind of comes around this bush and they look like they're going to come at it from different sides. They do not seem to notice that you guys are right there. What do you do? Uh, open fire, but do we have to really go on an initiative again? Not in this case. There, There's, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe we should wait till they get a little closer and then, I don't know, you, you tell me. Uh, I'd say... We could take them now, or we can wait a second longer until they take their prey. Regular range, okay. right? we're not at a negative. So yeah. I think we should now. And you should heal yourself up. You forgot to change your thing. Oh yeah, let me do it now. Temporary hit points. Unless we see the third one too. Uh, give me an intelligence check. You and Wagner both. Oh, it's always the intelligence. But you have so much of it, Dr. Wagner. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Captain Black doesn't see it, but Captain Matt Black's not seeing shit these days. Uh, Dr. Wagner, you don't see it, but you hear something rustling in the underbrush behind you and off to the left. You suspect that it is substantial enough to be another tiger. You're not sure if it's stalking you or uh, approaching the, the, the bait, the lure. Okay. All right. So let's go. Let's go round robin. We'll start at the top. Uh, Coffin Doyle. So you are top uh, top left. You see two tigers emerging. They are both focused on the lure, which is splashing around in the in the water. What do you do? Are you going to wait and maybe get a better shot, or move forward, or um, whistle, or run out and try and jump on the tiger? Or... Um, I think yeah. it's a thing. It's a long way to tip. Uh, 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 um, <laughs> he puts I, away that you put away the gun and pull out a, 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 a like the toothpick from your Swiss Army knife. Mm-hmm. I've got- uh, um, I'm the going spin. to um, my the, the range of my um, laser rifle is 400 meters. Um, oh yeah, you're. I mean, these guys are close. All right. Um, can I uh, go for the tiger in the uh, southeast? Sure. You want to go um, shoot across the thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's well within range. All right, great. Um, I'll take, uh, can I take two shots at each? Sure, you have to. Well... You want to split your targets? You could take one shot at each because to do that, I mean, uh, it happens so quickly on the trigger pull when you're on full auto. To do that, you would have to switch to semi auto, pull once, shift, and pull again. So you wouldn't get two shots, right. but one, yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? Um, instead, I'm gonna do full auto four shots, tiger to the extreme southeast. Okay. Um, so that's gonna be uh four. Um, I'm sorry, two d six plus th- uh three. Yep. Four times. Shoot him. Here we go. First shot. Uh, Hit. Shot. Hit. Third shot. Ooh, that's two, two, and I missed four. Oh uh, no, that eight is hit. It, it's a hit. All four attacks hit. All four mm-hmm. laser beams. So uh, that's uh, what do we say? 20, mm-hmm. 20 d six plus twelve. Yeah. 
73, 73 points. It cut so like you did before, you just just blow complete holes through this thing uh, as it's coming up, and it just uh, you know sort of almost explodes as the bl the blood and vaporized blood and and steam is coming out of it as you uh, shoot it down. <laughs> Excellent shot, Mister Doyle. I knew you were a great shot when I saw you. Even for a human, that's a good shot. I'm starting to feel. A a bit bad, you know. This is um, <laughs> not a fair fight. That gun it's is pretty, of... pretty tough. It's straight up military weaponry. I mean, yeah. you recognize yeah. that. This is this is a squad light machine gun for for a space for a space marine squad. This is this is what we used to use when I was a sergeant in the Marines, and we were doing planet side combat. I mean, this is this is a this is a squad assault weapon essentially. Uh, Weber Jicks. All right, I am using my my sniper rifle here and trying to take on Mr. Tiger. Um, I don't get any bonuses, right? I don't get the one shot. I don't get like get multiple the, you shots. You just get the one shot, no bonus. Yeah. Okay. So I'm taking the one closest to me. Okay. That's a hit. All right, and I believe you said it's five d six. Just checking that. Yes, 5D6. I believe that is correct. One, two, three, four, five d six plus fifty, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's terrible. But that's okay, not as good as I'd hope. But 15 points is not bad. Uh, boom! The thing. You, so the uh, fleshette hits it uh, and passes completely through it. You can see it sort of flying off here, and it, it staggers around and sort of stumbles around, and it's kind of looking around uh, to see where that came from. It does see you guys, but it doesn't make any immediate moves towards you. If it would it make eye contact me, I gently nudge my head towards Coffin. So. <laughs> like it was him. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Doctor Wagner. I've already been chewed on. Doctor Wagner. Um, do I only get that one chance to try to sense the tiger, or can I? Well, you know something's back there. There's something moving in the woods. You just can't see it. Okay. Well. Phew. Hmm. Yeah, I, it feels a little too close for comfort. Okay, so what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to go behind <laughs> Captain Black. Okay. And uh, and I will... Does my freeze gun have range adequate for... Uh, I think so. So I don't think you're probably two, four, six, eight. Um, well, it's uh, two, four. Six. Yeah, I think so. Freeze gun has a range of. Where is it? Cryo. Cryo has a range of ten meters. So, oh, yeah, you, you got to be within five squares. So you're gonna have to move up a little bit. Okay, I'll uh, I'll pause right here. Okay, you're not gonna shoot. Uh. Not if I can't hit anything. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, you could move forward more. To the Damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a guinea pig. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so you move in behind there. You've got your gun out, but you're not shooting as yet. Captain Black, what do you do? I am... Got a clear shot at that other one that, that uh, Weber, Weber just put a flushette through. That one right there. Whoa. My whole screen went weird. That must be a, the other tiger. <laughs> All right. Well, still, can you see the thing? That's the one I'm shooting at. It yep. occurs to me that we should ask how many freaking tigers there were. <laughs> I don't want a dirty dozen moment where I think I'm getting short and then the tiger eats me. And then... It was short, man. I was getting short, too. That's it. Not nearly as good a roll this time. 16 but. points. It's not going to be enough to kill it, I don't think. But uh, 17 or 15 plus my 16, right? Yeah, he still and he still has 30. above the points that he needs for a verm. So this uh, he has discounted himself for verms. Uh, okay, so now before we go into any sort of initiative, uh, Weber and Coffin, give me an intelligence check. Uh, okay, so yes, that's my best skill. Wow. You have plus six on intelligence? How do you plus six? Yeah. Intelligence, 14. 
What? Intelligence 14. Man, he's pushing maximum density there. All right. So, uh, so yeah, you both, you both hear. Well, if you look, so you hear something behind you, and you look up the path to the to the to the northwest, and you see a tiger sort of kind of like stalking on the path. Back to back. Uh, Coffin, Weber, you don't hear this because you see this guy coming from behind you. But Coffin, you also hear um, you also hear uh, sounds in the underbrush off to the north northeast. So like over here. All right. Back to back. You're guessing that this lure is dr- is bringing them all in. Okay. <laughs> Milkshake's bringing the boys to the yard. That's right. Okay. Um, great. I um, I'd say um, hey Jix, I got uh, tiger to my uh, northwest uh, and probably uh, tiger number two due north coming in. All right. I'll give you the old proverb of a tiger right in front of me is worth more than worth. More than two, two in the bush. So, <sighs> okay. Always kill a tiger you can see before you kill a tiger you don't see. <laughs> Good idea. All right, so let's go ahead and roll a uh, quick niche. Okay. While I hunt up my remaining tigers, of which there are right. many. Um. Great. Tam, um, we need you. <laughs> uh, hey, look, he's back. He's back. I hope you had a nice power nap. We're about to Dude. be eating my tigers. I'm looking for my icon. All right, so you're behind uh, the jellyfish. It's right by Seven Tide. He, he was cuddling you while you were sleeping. I'm going to um, select my character and see if I can um, automatically get on the turn order. Uh, did not work. I, I rolled an eight. Um, weird. You know, I select coffin and i roll but i'm not getting put it's, in the order the macros are that's okay probably. it's a yeah it could be just the macros not working uh so uh tell me what you rolled i rolled an, an um, eight all right not great but, okay, but coffin's got right. an eight I wagner is that a nine for you i see yep okay i got, a, I got the excellent the five those flaggers are bad <laughs> clearly slowed for my wounds Black got a 10. Five. The tiger's got a three, right? Uh, well, not really. Uh, Tam rolls an eight. Where's Tam? Oh, that's where I planned him. All right, so Tam, you may, uh, uh, Tam, you might have missed this, but essentially what they did was at the at the central fountain location, uh, Seven Tide ordered up a lure. He calls it uh, basically it, a, an animal was released from a uh, compartment uh, in the fountain, and uh, it's making a ton of noise. It's splashing around in the fountain and making a ton of noise because it's obviously injured and in pain, and it's drawing the tigers from the woods to the central location. Now, the rest of the guys have paired up into twos and taken up positions so that they could fire. And uh, and uh, Coffin wiped one out. He, he lit up that machine, that light machine gun again and took out this one right here. Uh, this fella right there. But, um, but and, and then Weber's, Weber's hunting. But there seems to be more of them coming out of the woodwork. There's, there's more approaching. Hey, can I hit the one I'm pinging? That's kind of a clear shot for me. Uh, give me an intelligence check though to see if you even see that, because you're looking. I mean, everybody's looking this direction. So give me an int. Yeah, you see him. That's probably the one that Wagner said he could he could hear in the in the underbrush, but couldn't see. So does an eight hit that guy? It's not your shot yet. <laughs> Why are you talking to me? Uh, we rolled for initiative. Did you roll? You're yeah, I thought he rolled an eight. Oh, he rolled a six. Never mind. Uh, Coffin rolled an eight. Oh, Coffin rolled an eight. All right, hold on a sec. Excuse me. Well, there we go. I roll this eight. All right. Tigers first. It's first. All right. Here comes the trouble. Uh, this one dives back into the underbrush out of the way uh obscured Ooh, this... wounded tiger the most dangerous prey or 
This one is moving forward into this, stalking the lure. This one moves forward. He's hanging back because he's not sure what's going on there. Uh, but uh, about the time you look around, Coffin, and you see that tiger on the path, mm -hmm. it sees you and charges, tries to bite you. Okay. These are like the rugged rage tigers. Ooh, jaws snap shut as you dodge out of the way at the last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is maneuver, so now it is Captain Black's turn. Captain, you saw that injured one go into the bush. He's obscured. I mean, you can sort of still see him, but these tigers are are uh, are hard to spot when they're in the woods. But I, I obviously can see this one. He's right in front of me. Oh, yeah. He popped out of there. He's looking at the lure. He doesn't see you or he's not the looking lure. at you. Either. Well, I'm going to shoot him. Okay. I'm oh, miss. miss. Shot goes wide. Don't. <laughs> Seven Tide is like, don't, don't burn down my forest. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to run out there? Maybe tackle him? Hit him again with your stick? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, All right. Give Dr. him a good belly rub. Dr. Wagner. Uh, I'm going to shoot at the, the uh, bait. You're going to shoot at the lure? Yep. Okay. He's but within first. range. Did I get any feedback from Jim? Uh, not yet, no. Well, it's only, it's only been a few minutes. What? <laughs> it's only been a few minutes. We spent a lot of money on a high-speed processor. Not that I recall. You talked a lot about it. Well, <laughs> talking is the same as doing. You guys you guys were ejected rudely from Greenpert system before you got a chance to upgrade. Oh, uh, well, yeah. that happens a lot. All right, I'm going to shoot, shoot the lure. Shooting the lure, not the tiger. Yep. Okay. You got this tiger. Okay, cool. Go for it. Going to shoot the six. Lure. Six miss. Goes off of your uh, 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 a, uh, ball of super chilled plasma goes off into the woods. Do you want to move? Run up there? Grab the tiger? No, I'm, 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 I'm Jump on the lure. Fine hiding behind Captain Black. Okay. Uh, Coffin Doyle. This creature's right. right on you. Gotcha. Um, I, I, I'm going to um, do four attacks on the um, tiger. So you're going to whirl around and just open? Well, um, Wix and I were, uh, whoever Jix and I were standing back to back, um, I think I'm yeah. already facing him. So. Uh, well, you can whirl around. It's okay. I mean, you know he's there. You were looking that okay. direction. All right. So um, four shots. Uh, yep. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, one, two. Oh, Oops! Sorry. Hold on. Oops. Counting your counting your uh, laser damage before it's hatched. I didn't mean to. Uh, That's right. Uh, one. Uh, th 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 uh, I'm sorry. One. My uh, screen shifted. That That's weird. Okay. So uh, uh that yeah, was one, one shot. Two shots. Uh, whoa! You did it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got one solid shot, and that's a 12. That's a hit. You missed on the second one. Uh, that, you know, that's weird. I, I'm pressing the same 2d6 plus 3 reroll, but I get the... Um, you get the damage uh, roll instead. Yeah, that's weird. weird. That is weird. Okay, uh, well, uh, as long as we get 2d6, we can ignore the, the damage rolls. You got one hit so far. You got two more shots left. Got you. Thank you. Uh, you that's know, another hit. I am again... It, it, uh, Weird. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, here's a okay. shot number four. Uh, and a miss. So two hits. So uh, what, what, 5d6 plus six. Okay. Uh, you mean 10d6 uh, plus six? Oh, 10d6. That's right. That's right. Sorry. Uh, so uh, I may just do that real fast. 10d6 plus one, two, three, four. Uh, I do 34. Okay, 34 points of damage. It hit a couple of hits, and you've heard it, but it is not down. Oh, damn, damn it. it sucked up a couple of en uh, of energy blasts. Seven Tide reaches over in, uh, a tentacle and puts it on Wagner's shoulder, and he's like, ha, ha, I understand the attraction, but please don't shoot the lure until it has lured all the tigers in. Otherwise, we'll all have to hunt them down instead of waiting them to come to us. <laughs> Memetam. Now you shoot, buddy. I'm shooting this guy again. All right. You're, well, that's a different tiger. The first tiger you looked at went off, but another tiger came and took its place. So you can shoot at him. So you're putting that maglev gun to, to good use. Uh, 
Oh, Ooh, fuck. it's miss. You miss the oh, the the disc goes flying off into the trees. Mm. Ah, damn it! Too many gin and tonics. Uh, do you want to move? Like charge it or something for next shot? No, I do not. Yeah. Next day in it. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the charging a tiger, a genetically modified tiger, is a is a. It's a, well, certainly it's a bold move. Uh, but hey, hey, I trademarked that move. I'm sorry. Don, <laughs> I Don might have been a. Yeah, Don might have been asleep it, in my. I can't uh, do it the original justice, so I'm not doing it at all. Charging a genetically modified tiger is hereby called the the Weber. Yeah. We're doing. He did a Weber on it. All I right. did not. You're not going to do a Weber. No. All right. It's Weber's turn. I have a feeling that Weber's going to do a Weber. Yeah, I will. <laughs> He's going to chase all, that tiger into the woods, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. That always works out well. Um, this can I see this tiger or no? No, he slipped into the woods. All you right. can't see him. I mean, so you I'm, can he, you could sort of hear him. Uh, and if you wanted to follow blood trails or something, you probably. Oh could. yeah, sure. No, I'm going to shoot the tiger directly in front of me, or no, you know, I'm going to pivot around and shoot the tiger. What are you shooting? Uh, sniper, uh, sniper rifle, or uh, or do you reach into your vest and pull out a body pistol? Well, I can do that too, but I'm going to do the. Uh, I'm doing the sniper. Rifle. I have a shotgun still, but I'm doing a sniper rifle. If it's if it's not too close to do this, I figure it's basically a point. You could shoot a sniper range. rifle, yeah. So here we go. Oop, I'm, I'm on the zoom thing. I'm trying to roll the dice on the zoom. That's always. Ooh, missed. Ooh, missed. The pressure's on. Ah, my hands. All are right, a lot of things. All right, so uh, it's it's uh, 11:58 on the East Coast. We're at the top of the order. Do you guys want to do another round, or do you want to stop no, here? I can't. I've got a long, long day tomorrow. Okay. All right. So we'll stop here, and uh, we will restart uh, the tiger fight. Uh, the next time we play. And uh, Weber, I will get back to you. Jin does reach out to you with some of the genetic uh, information. He's done, he's done the samples. I will you said email Weber, you but separately. You meant, you meant, I, uh, meant and, uh, I meant yeah. Wagner. Sorry. Wagner. Dr. Wagner, Can I'll I send you the... To bed? Yep, I'll send you an email with that information. Okay. I think Don's already in bed. <laughs> All right. Good night, Don. Thanks, you guys. This was Thank awesome. That, that was fun. Yeah. Thank you. And All it's right. not over yet. All right. I'm going to tell the tale for it. Um, All right. See you, guys. Bye. Thanks again for a, a uh, great weekend of games. Um, you bet. Of uh, I, I have as much fun as anybody, so uh, I'm glad of it. All right. All right. Check you guys later. Good night. Take care.